This is straining. Only 10 points scored in two consecutive losses. First to the Giants and then to the Miami Dolphins. But Carmichael's caught 51. The defense for the Eagles, the best in football. Only 14 points allowed. The linebacker, Mr. Outside Robinson, Mr. Inside the master superb the key is robert montgomery the most dangerous eagle receiver is also the best rusher experts say he must touch the ball 30 times if the eagles are to win and when they must across the river in baltimore dallas has a one game lead over philadelphia monk is the long distance receiver for washington and joe theisman has it under control only seven interceptions the last eight games and the redskins have won five of eight in the first game between these two, Theismann had more yardage overhead than anybody else against the Eagles in 1981. They're on a hot roll. The Redskins defense can be rushed against, but last week, Ferguson for Buffalo only completed six passes. And so today, in the nation's capital, on natural grass, the Eagles and the Redskins, and they don't like each other. CBS Sports presents... National Football League. Today, the Philadelphia Eagles against the Washington Redskins. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the nation's capital. It's about 48 degrees. The wind will be gusty to about 37 miles an hour, but as the coaches say, it's perfect for football. It's a sellout. Hi, I'm Tom Brookshire, along with the former great Dallas quarterback, Roger Staubach. And, uh, Roger, let's get real honest about it. Wilbur Montgomery has a tremendous load on his shoulders. Uh, he's got to catch it and run like gangbusters today, doesn't he? You're exactly right, Tom. As you mentioned uh, earlier in the show, also, he is the key to that uh, football team catching and running the football. When you talk value to a team, there's nobody that's any more valuable than Wilbur Montgomery is to the Eagles. When they have him going, uh, he is just tough as can be. The Redskins' Achilles heel is their rush defense, so Wilbert is a big factor today for the Philadelphia Eagles. They had 26 injured players in the Redskins, and it looked like almost the, the passenger list for the Titanic for a while, but they're healthy, especially Joe Washington, and I think that he is really the key for them. Uh, Joe Washington, you look at their statistics this year. When he's been in the game, he's been healthy. They have moved the football. He catches it. He runs. He's similar to Wilbur Montgomery. Against Dallas, he missed the second half, and it really hurt him. Joe Washington is back healthy. He missed the last Eagle game, but I think he'll make the Eagles realize he's here today. Okay, Roger. Tony Franklin is kicking off to the right from the 35. Waiting is Mike Nelms, number 21, the best return man in all of football, and Nelms will get it one yard deep in the end zone. We're underway. It's on natural grass, and Nelms breaks out over. He's going to get out to the 37-yard line and finally pull down by number 20. Franklin's kick. A tremendous return by Mike Nelms, and the Redskins are hot. Remember that first game in Washington. The Redskins really loaded it up, and for three quarters, played the Eagles right into the turf up at Vet Stadium, the artificial turf. We'll set that Redskin offense and the Eagle defense, the very best in football, in just a moment. Joe Theismann is the quarterback. Joe Washington, the only back in the two tight end system for Gibbs. Here's the handoff, the reverse to Mock. Flea Flicker back to Theismann, going deep. He's going for number 80 C, and he C is overthrown at the 20-yard line. Herm Edwards in hot pursuit. Well, that's a way to open the football game. Wow. Herman Edwards did a nice job, though. He didn't go for the fake. He stayed with his man all the way and did a good job. But I like to see that. They uh, came out. Uh, Washington is, has nothing to lose with this offense now. Joe Theismann, of course, threw that football, and Washington is healthy. And Don Warren, of course, is uh, the guy they got to go through at the tight end against the the uh, Eagle defense. And, of course, their offensive line is probably the healthiest it's been in a long time. Tom. Bostick's the only player that's played all of it. The offensive center, the rest, though, are young, bullish, and healthy for the first time. That's Ricky Walker in motion, the tight end. Straight drop back. Theismann trying to screen to the right side. Gets it to number 85. That's Don Warren. Warren out over the 40 to about the 42. LaMaster making that tackle. You know, one thing that dictates that uh, flea flicker was that Nelms. They figure, well, if we get the ball out in good field position, we'll go with a play like that. And Nelms did his job. He's the best in the business. Marion Campbell's defense, the best in football. Dennis Bigfoot Harrison, Charlie Johnson, and Carl Hairston. That's on the running defense, the 34. Wilkes, Chesley, LaMaster, Robinson. Of course, John Bunny not playing. He's got the bad wheel. We'll set that secondary for you in just a second. It's third down, and let's call it five yards to go on the 42. That's Monk in motion. Theismann getting time. 
Gets it to Joe Washington at the 45. He's hit immediately there by two Eagles. Looks like Johnny Shara in there and Ray Ellis. You know, Joe really made a mistake right there. They, he knew he had five yards to go, and he's going to get hit immediately when he catches the football, so he's got to get those five yards. He turned at about three, three and a half yards, and it, it really wasn't enough for the first down. That's just kind of a mental error on his part. The wind is perhaps a crosswind. This is young Connell, the kicker. Not an overpowering punter, but he's been fairly careful and has none blocked so far this year. Wally Henry is waiting for it. He's had some success running back punts against the Redskins. He did in game one. It's not a great kick. Henry's going to watch it hit at the 25, takes it at the 20, and then he's immediately swarmed under. Good coverage by the Redskins. Why did Henry watch that hit? I think he could have caught that. I think he's still worrying a little bit about uh, handling the football cleanly. That's a tough place to be. That's like a kicker. I think you're right about that. You know, he, he fumbled that last one against Miami, and you do think about that. Sometimes a quarterback throws an interception. You have to forget about those last plays, and really Wally at the worst should have fair caught that football. So the Eagle offense now has a chance to get on top early. Remember, the Eagles are not a great catch-up team. They're fundamentally sound, but they don't have great outside speed in the receiver core. First down and 10, right on the 22. That's Jaworski. The handoff to Wilbert Montgomery, running right at Dexter Manley. Wilbert gets out to the 27-yard line, and you should see a lot of number 31. Brad Dusak making the first tackle for the Redskin defense. Let's set the Eagle offensive system now. Jaworski, Wilbert Montgomery with 1,111 yards rushing, and he missed a couple of games. Booker Russell, free agent that's at fullback. Carmichael, of course, Charlie Smith, Crepley, Stan Wallers, Kenny, Morris, Baker, Sizemore, solid on the line of scrimmage. Second down, five. Back into the I formation now. Booker Russell is the fullback, the nearback. Handoff drive inside to Wilbert Montgomery. Gets out over the 32-yard line. Monty Coleman, the linebacker, making the tackle. Two for two. Think Wilbert's going to get called a few times today? Well, Wilbert is the key, as we mentioned uh, early in the show, and, of course, he is very special. They did get the first down. It's first and ten. He catches a football 43 receptions, Tom. As you mentioned, his yardage, he's got a 4.9 rushing average. What's amazing from that eye formation, he's had three or four different fullbacks this year. Fullback blocks for him, so he's really been extra special. He doesn't care who blocks for him. He's getting the yardage. Billy Canfield is in there now with Wilbert Montgomery. It's a first down. Here's the fake inside. Being rushed, knocked away, and down the middle, taking the reception and the ball. And we covered I believe it's Billy Canfield who recovered his own fumble after making the catch. That's exactly right. That was a break. Canfield uh, kept his composure when he fumbled the ball, turned around. There was the ball, and he grabbed it again. Nice play. There. Here's the play action fake, and, of course, Canfield is out in the flat. That holds the linebackers. They don't get their depth when number 52, of course, was beaten there, Okowitz. He went for the run fake, and that's what the, that's why you fake the run. Uh, Okowitz was the guy that could have stopped the play. He didn't. Canfield scampers back, and nice catch, and even a better fumble recovery. The 31st catch for Billy Canfield. Now Booker Russell, the big fullback, is back in there. The Eagles got it moving here the first time they've touched the football. It's a first down on the Redskin 43. High formations. Drop back, quick draw play to Wilbur Montgomery. Wilbur gets hit hard by Dexter Manley, number 72, almost to the 40-yard line. And the Redskins can be rushed against. A week ago... Uh, Hooks had a great time filling in for Cribs with Buffalo and had over 100 yards. And Montgomery has had six 100-yard games coming in. Quite a quite a back. The Redskins uh, defensively have played pretty darn good the last couple of weeks, but as you mentioned, they've given up the rush. They've held teams against the pass. In fact, uh, Ferguson only had about 60 yards last week throwing the football, but they're vulnerable at the line of scrimmage running the football. Second down and eight. Remaining back is Wilbert Montgomery. He's out of the backfield. Jaworski now with time. He steps up, fumbles the football, and recovers his own fumble at midfield. And now the Redskins are fighting for it, and they think they have it. Jaworski appeared to recover his own fumble. The ball just slipped out of his hand. But I saw a defensive lineman come up with it. I believe Perry Brooks, the defensive right tackle, made the recovery. 
Uh, Jaworski doesn't agree with that. He's still out there uh, feuding with the referee. He he wanted to throw the ball. He wanted to go, number one, he wanted to go to uh, Wilbert Montgomery. Monty Coleman is an excellent defensive linebacker. Had him man-to-man. -man. He came back to try to hit the tight end. The ball slipped out of his hand, and right there, uh, number 69, Perry Brooks, looks like he grabbed it. It looked away. like Jaworski, though, had it recovered, didn't it? And he lost it again. Redskins have the football. With their... 15th fumble recovery, and they have that two tight end offense, and Joe Washington is the remaining back. That's Ricky Walker in motion. They're running to the strong side. Joe Washington cuts inside, gets to the 45 and inside. Reggie Wilkes making the tackle. And little Joe at about 178 pounds is about as good all-around football player as you're going to see in this league. Bigfoot Harrison is on the ground. Dennis Harrison is still down, number 68. That's Otho Davis. It's rolling over the big fellow from Vanderbilt. And he's gone down to his right knee, which you don't like to see that. He's had a little bit of a knee problem part of this year. Fourth round draft out of Vanderbilt. A giant at 280 pounds, six foot nine. Boy, he's in pain. We saw little Joe Washington, though, the first half against Dallas a couple of weeks ago, Roger. And he carried that team until he had to leave with an injury. We'll be back and keep you posted on this injury in just a moment. Impressive numbers. Second versus the rice, second versus pass, first overall, and more importantly, first in giving up points. That's the big stat, Tom. I agree. Here's uh, Dennis is walking off the field, which is a very good sign. He, um, I think, was really worried about the knee. It was his right knee it was troubling him, but he, he did get up. He's walking off the field in his own power, but as you mentioned, those stats, they have not given up uh, many points. Less than 15 points a game for the last three or four years, so that's big, pretty impressive. Big Leonard Mitchell, the number one draft out of Houston, 99, is playing that spot. Inside trap with the tight end. Joe Washington be met head on, and you can't run for a steady diet against that. LaMaster and Chesley double teamed him. Little over three and a half yards per rushing attempt against this defense. And then when you get into the passing situation, which the Eagles assume now, you bring in four down linemen and you'll get a rush. Kenny Clark comes in. Carl Harrison moves inside, or in this case, he moves to the left defensive inside now, outside of Mitchell. They also bring in uh, Ray Ellis and John Shar. They bring in those extra backs, which puts them man-to-man -man on the Redskins, so it's uh, even tougher to throw against that. Third and five, they got three receivers to the left side, and wide open is Terry Metcalf. Metcalf to the 30-yard line, and very quickly, the Redskins have moved deep into Eagle territory. Jerry Robinson really missed an assignment there, and at, at, the la at the last moment, he realized that he had Metcalf out in the flat, and the Redskins really, when they bring in uh, people, they can confuse you. They have uh, Thompson in there and Metcalf, and sometimes you get confused on personnel and forget who your man was, and I think that time Robinson had uh, a, a mental error. And remember the first game up in Philadelphia, Metcalf had several great catches in the first half. Giants and the Rams. The Rams have jumped out 7-0 over New York early in the first quarter. Washington getting to the 30-yard line and a lot of heat. Carl Harrison and Reggie Wilkes making the tackle. Again from that double tight end formation. And they'll bring in a third receiver when they want to throw as they did with Metcalf. A dangerous offensive ball club. And Joe Gibbs has the San Diego philosophy. A lot of motion make you take the wrong coverage. That time it worked. It's second down and nine on the 30. Big play here. Reverse motion by Monk. A draw play to Joe Washington looking for anywhere to go. Great defensive play by Mitchell. Number 99 went through, forced the play, and made a great tackle. He did. Uh, George Stark had him. Uh, he spun back around off of Stark and came back and, and made the play. As you mentioned, they, they do have a creative offense, the Redskins. They, they do camouflage a lot of things with their motion. And here's, here's Washington right here. And Stark gets a block right here, but uh, Mitchell spins. Bounces right into him and gets a little cleanup help also from big Charlie Johnson. Mitchell's a load, too. The big kid's 270-some-odd pounds, and it's hard to get a chance to play. Here's the four-man rush now. Third down and 10 on the 31. Here's Theismann, reverse rolling on purpose. And down there by C, 
Virgil C., the young man from Troy State, made a great catch, and he was hit immediately. Well, John Shar was right there on the play. He almost uh, started to go for the interception, but Theismann really drilled that ball, and, and rolling to his left, that's an excellent play to drill a ball going to your left like that. Number C had over 100 yards catching and a touchdown against the Detroit Lions when the Redskins upset them. He's got good speed. He's short. But as you can see, he has great hands. First and 10 on the Eagle 14-yard line. 6.48. Gone in the first quarter. Walker in motion. Handoff to the left side. And Joe Washington gets to the 10-yard line before he's belted. Chesley making the tackle. Joe Washington has a flak jacket on his left side where one of the Cowboys kicked him in the ribs. He's playing with not much weight, a lot of heart, glasses. He might be one of the great second-round draft choices that you'll ever see. That's what the Redskins gave Baltimore to get him. That's what you call a deal right there. It's a He's, steal. He has paid dividends. Over almost 700, over 700 yards rushing, 58 receptions. Second down, six. That's the tight end of motion. They're running to the strong side. Washington scoots back inside to the five. Chesley again making the tackle. George Stark making the good block up front, the veteran at right tackle. That's a disciplined defense the Eagles use, though. They they look like you give them a, a crack on offense, and all of a sudden it's filled by a defensive uh, player. Those linebackers are very active. Lamas Lamaster and Chesley in the middle, Robinson and Wilkes on the outside. They, they really uh, pursue, hustle, and make a hit. When you think you've got a few extra yards, all of a sudden it's closed down by a big green jersey. Third and two big plays, but this is certainly big. Washington gets outside, scores standing up. Started outside, and Little Joe cut it back inside and scored the touchdown. His fourth rushing touchdown of the season. Here he goes, right here. He's going to the outside, and nice block, good inside block and cutoff, and uh, of course, the play is overrun by Lamaster that time. He started to uh, to pursue to the outside, and Washington cut back with that quickness and in the end zone standing up. Mosley now trying to make it seven. He's missed one extra point all year. He has missed two extra points all year. A 6 nothing Washington lead following the recovery of a fumble from Ron Jaworski. A lot of time left in the first period, a lot of action too. Here he is, the kid from Oklahoma. Good shutoff block by Walker in the inside, and Jacoby and Lamaster overruns the play, and Joe Washington's in the end zone. A big touchdown. A, a touchdown against a fine Eagle defense gives the Redskins some confidence, and the Eagles, as you mentioned, Tom, don't uh, have a great knack of coming back if they get too far behind with the conservative offense they use. That extra point being missed by Mosley uh, will sort of hang there. We've got 5.20 left in the first, and Mosley's kicking off to Billy Camfield. The young man out of Kansas who's put together like a rock will get the return action. Mosley usually gets a high kick. This is just fair for him. It hits Camfield. He gets it. Now he's out over the 10-yard line. Billy Camfield coming straight out. And it's really hit at the 21 by several Redskins. This is a real study in uh, psychology right here. And I, I want to, you know, mention the... The Eagles situation, of course, as everyone knows, they have to win. The Redskins don't. They can try the flea flickers. They can take some chances. But I really believe the Eagles have got to take some chances also. They can't be tight. And right now they look a little tense, a little tentative. And that uh, shows the pressures on them. But you still have to make things happen and take some chances. Very solid up front. The Eagle offensive line from tackle to tackle is excellent. Crepley's a very good tight end. But not a lot of speed outside. And keep it in mind, Booker, Russell, and Montgomery, the backs. Redskins are really ganging the line of scrimmage on this first down. May have been too much time. Jaworski, you might know, or you should know, gets the plays relayed in from the sidelines, from upstairs down to Stiles, who stands next to Coach Vermeil, and then they wigwag in the signals, and they didn't get the playoff. Delay of game, offense, still first down. Eagles are the second most penalized team in football right now. San Diego has that dubious distinction, but the Eagles are closing in on it with plays like that. It's first down and 15, back on the 16. High formation. 
motion is Charlie Smith. Toss back to Wilbert Montgomery. He gets caught back at the 15-yard line. Dave Butts, the gigantic defensive tackle, and Manley made the stop. Well, the Eagles just seem to me like they're waiting for something to happen instead of trying to make things happen. Uh, a mistake, five-yard penalty. They're in a first and 15. Now they're dug, dug themselves back into another hole, and they need to, to get aggressive as far as a, a big play. Tough place to call it, Rod. Second and 16. you got to be a little careful. you got to throw it now, though. you got to get out of there. Campfield is in the backfield. There's the draw play that's not going to get to anywhere but the 15. Olkowitz, the first man there, the middle linebacker for Washington, to bring up a punting situation. Dave Butts also in on the tackle. Here's the draw. The Redskins haven't brought in their nickel yet. It was only second 16. The draw is kind of tough against that front four. Dave Butts is solid in the middle. Uh, Redskins now bring in their nickel defense. They bring in Dallas Hickman to replace uh, Manley, and they also bring in an extra back, uh, Nelm. So they're now looking for the pass, but that second down situation was a time to throw the football. Wally Henry is in. Three wide receivers in the shotgun. Last week, the Redskins blitzed the Buffalo shotgun quite often. They don't this time. It's a regular. Jaworski going to the outside. Carmichael has it the 33-yard line and gets to the 40 before he steps out. Jarris White trailing the big fella. 50-second reception for Harold Carmichael. Well, that was a well-designed play, Tom. They had Smith down the left sideline, Canfield. They flooded the left side, and they had uh, Carmichael with the flood over there, man-to-man -man on Joe Lavender, and he came out to the outside, and, of course, Smith ran uh, Jarris White out of the picture, and a nice throw by Jaworski. Good move by Carmichael. And a good throw to get under your belt as the quarterback, right? Well, it is. It's uh, especially getting out of that rut they were in back there also. If they would have had to punt, being behind six to nothing, that's uh, kind of desperation. Jaworski, two for two for 48 yards now. The I formation with the breathing room. Handoff to Wilbert Montgomery. Wilbert covers the ball up. Gets out to the 43-yard line. Couple of scores. There's a lot of action that still means something around the NFL right now. San Francisco on top of Cincinnati, 7 0 in the first quarter. And New Orleans on top of St. Louis, 3 0. Cardinals hot as a pistol with Lomax as their QB, and they've won three in a row. 3.05 left in the first period, a second down seven facing the Eagles. Spagnola and Crepley, two tight ends in there. Montgomery cuts through it. Jaworski has time and throws it to Spagnola. The big Yaley gets to the 40-yard line. Olkowitz making the tackle. Yeah, Stan Walters did a nice job. Manley really took a quick escape, and Walters pushed him around the outside. Jaworski stepped in the pocket, had, had good time, and Spagnolia hooked down there between Neil Okowitz and Monty Coleman, and Jaworski drilled it right on the numbers. Spagnola's had the hamstrings for most of the middle part of the season. He's back healthy. And the two tight end offense will look good with Wilbert Montgomery as your remaining back. It's first and 10 on the 40 now. The Eagles look like they might be generating something. Inside him, Canfield barely gets the line of scrimmage at the 40. Olkowitz making another tackle. Well, the Redskins uh, seem to have shored, shored, uh, shored up their, something like that anyway, rushing defense. Here they go. <laughs> they stop Canfield. They've been uh, giving up a lot of yardage running the football. So far, they've shut down the Eagles running the ball, but the Eagles have thrown the ball well in the series. Make those linebackers commit early that way. A play-action pass you can throw behind them. It's second down and 10. There's a blitz. Blitz is on. Jaworski gets away from it and finds the receiver, Crepley, who is still on his feet down to the 23-yard line. What a great escape by Ron Jaworski. 
Uh, Crepley has been one of the underrated tight ends. This year he's had some injuries off and on. He hasn't uh, had the kind of year that that he's had in the past. Only 18 receptions, five for touchdowns. But there's a patented Crepley play right there. A tough situation. Jaworski does a nice job, steps up in the pocket and drills it in there. Crepley concentrates on the football. And then with that strength he has, he pulls away from Mark Murphy, number 29, and gets an extra yard or two. But that's, that's what Crepley does well. Catches the ball in tight situations, and he can run with it. Murphy told me that he thinks Crepley's the most underrated tight end maybe in the league. A first and 10 for the Eagles, number 26. Jaworski straight back on first down. Outside, Camfield has it. Gets stared down and finally tackled at the 35. Monty Coleman looking him right in the eye. Coleman's got that speed for linebacker, and he's one of the few linebackers uh, similar to Jerry Robinson. They have that great, great speed that all, probably could play cornerback with their kind of speed, and they play the backs very well, very tight in man-to-man -man situations out in the flat. You like the way Jaworski throws it? He has good velocity. What do you think about him, Roger? Quarterback to quarterback. I think he's uh, he's really making strides and proving each and every year. I think his emotion sometimes uh, breaks his concentration. I think at, at times Ron loses that concentration. Good call. Second down and nine. A one-yard pickup. Campfield sneaking through the line. Jaworski being chased. Going to the outside. Throws a knuckler. Spagnola couldn't get up on the ladder enough to get it. And I think we have a red skin down on the field as the first quarter comes to a close. Okowitz is down, but he's trying to get up, and so are the Eagles. A 6-0 Washington lead, and the Birds have the ball and seem to be driving. CAA basketball here on CBS. This is the game next Saturday. I watched Ohio State play Kentucky is quite a game on CBS. It's good to see baskets back. There's Olkowitz, the big guy from Maryland. He's the leading tackler on this ball club. It's a tough cookie, Olkowitz. By this time of the season, you got to be bandaged, and he is, about every place. First quarter went by uh, Hummond. Only took 27 minutes for 50 minutes of good football. Redskins are really hitting today, and they don't really like the Eagles anyway. This goes back a long time. Shotgun formation on third down and nine. We have Lamar Parrish in there for the first time in three weeks. He's got time. He's going outside. A wide open receiver. Billy Canfield scores a touchdown. Canfield was wide open. Somehow got beyond the perimeter. And Jarris White recovered just too late. Well, the Redskins went to that nickel defense on second and ten that time. Jarris White was in there. And, of course, Parrish. And he isolated uh, Canfield on White. Canfield went out in the flat, turned it upfield. And Jaworski hit him uh, a little bit behind him, but Canfield caught the football into the end zone. He picked out the right receiver. Billy had 9-6 speed when he was back at Kansas, so I think he's a lot faster than perhaps defensive backs believe he is. Tony Franklin now will be trying for the extra point. He's missed one so far this year, too. I wonder if his bare foot is cold today. It's rather brisk. Johnny Shara is holding. Dead solid perfect. A mental lift for the Eagles to come back and score after that six-point uh, quick touchdown by the Redskins. Jaworski is on target, and Camfield seems to be catching most of them. It's 7-6. Tony Franklin puts the barefoot to work. It's taken on the side by Alvin Garrett, that used to be with the Giants. Alvin Garrett, with a good return, gets out over the 30. 7-6, the Eagles have drawn ahead by the single digit. Johnny Shara made that tackle. Alvin Garrett's always been a real good football player, and the Giants unloaded him because he, they simply ran out of numbers on their roster. That was a big drive right there by the Eagles. 79 yards, Jaworski threw the ball extremely well, the last touchdown to, to Camfield, but it was a picker-upper also. They couldn't afford to make a mistake in that drive and have the Redskins get in scoring opportunity again, so they did it. They had the pressure on them, and they scored. The toss back to Joe Washington, who may have gotten a yard or so and almost got his bell rung. The Eagles look like they are perhaps beginning to hit a lick on both sides now. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League as intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Washington Redskins and the National Football League is prohibited. 14-15, left in quarter number two, a 7-6 game. New England 
7-0 over Miami. First quarter action. Every game means something, doesn't it? Theismann getting rushed by Carl Harrison. Reverses. Now he's being tackled for a loss by, I believe, Kenny Clark, number 71. Bigfoot Harrison back in there again, too. A big pass rush. Well, that was a pass rush, and uh, Theismann gets out of the grasp of the first guy right here, and I guess it was Dennis Harrison, number 68, comes around that corner, and he, Theismann spins off, but they keep pursuing, and here comes big number 71, Ken Clark, who's in that nose guard position for Charlie Johnson. They sack him for a big loss. Fourth sack for Kenny Clark, a free agent out of Syracuse, who rolls like a ball when he gets into that pass rush. Now it's third down and 27, back on the 15. Theismann's got to be careful now. Let's see in motion, number 80. Theismann rolling almost on his own now. Throwing on the run and complete the pass to Ricky Thompson. It's going to be short of the first down. Bernard Wilson was there. It's a good move by Theismann that time. The pressure he had to the outside was Jerry Robinson was coming fast, but... That guy right there, Ricky Thompson, keeps making the plays. He makes big catches for the Redskins. He caught that one, got him in good punting position. He does play extremely well against the Eagles. A little man from Baylor who runs the good pattern. Connell now back to kick. The wind is swirling. And Wally Henry back to take it at the Eagle 25. There's the snap. No pressure on him. A high kick. Henry back to the 23-yard line. Wally Henry has a little running room and gets to the 30. Good coverage by the special teams for the Redskins. Thirteen eleven before halftime. Philadelphia warming to the task. They lead by one point. Popular young people right here in the nation's capital, Joe Gibbs, from an 0 and 5 to a 5 and 8. And of course, Dick Vermeil just took Eagle football in 76 and turned it around. Nothing but a winner. Here's a first and 10 call on the 31. That's Charlie Smith that's going in motion. Jaworski with only one incompletion, dumps it over the middle for his second incompletion, trying for Krepfley. Detroit with an Eddie Murray field goal leads Green Bay 3-0 and everybody but Chicago is still in that Central Division race. St. Louis with a touchdown now leads New Orleans 7-3 in the first period. Olkowitz is back in at middle linebacker. He was in on the last play actually. Second down and 10. back, gets some time, comes across the middle, intercepted. Intercepted by Murphy, his sixth interception of the year. Jaworski missed Carmichael coming across the middle. He was going to Carmichael all the way, and Carmichael's complaining out there right now. He felt he was held up coming into that middle. Jaworski threw the ball out in front, anticipating Carmichael's move, and Carmichael couldn't get into that middle quick enough. Here's Jaworski right now. He goes to throw it, thinks he has Carmichael. The Carmichael was held up. Murphy made the interception. Well, they're still going at it over there a little bit. I, it's probably... Uh, Coach Vermeil and George. It's probably it. creative over there, but they've been pointing at each other. And I think uh, Vermeil was saying, you shouldn't have thrown that middle, Ron. And Ron was saying, well, I thought Harold was going to get there quicker. Here's the slip screen pass out to Art Muck by Theismann. And Muck quickly gets to the 40-yard line and inside the 40. Blackmore, who is in there for Ronell Young. Ronell Young has a bad ankle and a shoulder. Boy, Art Muck can get underway in a hurry. Here's what the Redskins do. They, they run the quick screens, the fake draws off of this two tight end set. They drill it out here on the quick screen. They send George Stark, number 74, out in front of the play with uh, C blocking also. Little gain, good coverage by the Eagles. A seven yard pickup, second down three on the 39. There's Walker, the tight ends in motion. Joe Washington inside, oh, he's hit hard and dropped. Almost as they got to the hole, it closed up. You run out the 34, Charlie Johnson, the nose man, the pro bowler, controls those three men across the line of scrimmage from him, and those defensive ends do a job. That was Carl Hairston knifing in. 
You know, you think sometimes that these guys, the professionals, they're out there going through the uh, routine, but these guys are nervous. Before a game like this, the Eagles have a lot of pressure on them. Vermeil does, Jaworski, they, they have a great football team. They've stumbled the last few weeks, and uh, right now they're uh, playing a little bit nervous. Third and two, what do you call, Roger? Here's the call. Joe Washington goes outside, gets away from Charlie Johnson, and is awfully close to the first down. Dennis Harrison made the tackle with LeMaster. That's going to be close. I'd say if he doesn't make it, they'll still go for it. It's going to be that close. Here's Charlie, though. He, he sneaks in there, could stop the play for yard loss, gives it a nice try, but just gets away at Washington with his elusiveness. And he probably bowled his way close to the first down. If they don't make it, I'm sure they'll go for it. The five and eight, you might as well go for it, right? By the nose? And by the nose. Theisman has gotten less passing yardage than he did in the first five losses, but as that rushing game has come up to sort of balance off, and they're pretty close to a one-pass ratio of even, which is a pretty decent way to have your offense going. He, he's been a better quarterback, I think. Of course, he's won five games, which helps, too. Yes, and last week's the first time they went back some of their old ways, turnovers and penalties. Uh, they've stayed away from mistakes, and they've played excellent football when they've stayed away from those mistakes. First and ten call. That's the tight end in reverse motion. Seisman quickly back. Has a lot of time and overthrows. The receiver coming back for it. That's C, Virgil C, coming back. Blackmore looked like he had him covered pretty well. Here's C this time, and Blackmore is in there for Royale Young. Blackmore's a free agent. He's not on him tight enough, it's just a bad throw. Theismann throws it to the outside, and either C broke to the inside too, too far, but they missed communications, quarterback and receiver. Theismann is 6 of 8 for 61 yards. Washington has carried the ball for 23 yards on only 10 carries. It's tough to run against this defense. Second down, 10. Straight drop back, and the rush is on, the blitz is on, but Theismann has time, and it's almost intercepted by Blackmore. Well, that time Blackmore really read that well. Theismann was looking out there to see the blitz was on, and he anticipated perfectly, and it looked like the ball, at the sun is hitting that angle over there, and it's a little bit tough on our cameras also with that sun. It's an unusual sun this stadium, but this time it uh, looked like Blackmore had the ball in his hands, and we'll see it right here. He had a shot there. Yes, he did. But he he could have went all the way on that time. I bet Fred Bruni, the defensive backfield coach upstairs, almost fell out of the stadium. Boy, you dream about those playing cornerback. There's that defense, the number one defense in the National Football League. An incredible group under Marion Campbell, the old Fox. It's third down and ten, and the four-man line is rushing this time. Theismann, uh-oh, the flags are down, and Carl Harrison grabs the quarterback. Number 74, offense. A false start by Stark, the big right tackle, trying to get ready for the pass block. He is mad about it, too. Look at Stark. He's the veteran this line. They've got Jones, Bostic, Grimm, Jacoby. Number 74, still third down. All young guys, and the old-timer got the penalty. The first penalty against Washington. It'll bring up... Third and 15, back on the 42. Look at this job in the second period. The Vikings and the Bears, 0-0, and they've got good weather in Chicago. That's not a blizzard either. That's Metcalf in motion. Eisman getting big heat from Brown, throws over the middle, intercepted by Bernard Wilson. Bernard Wilson back over the 30, still on his feet to the 36-yard line. And Grimm, the big left guard, made the tackle. Theismann thought he had uh, Metcalf isolated on Jerry Robinson. Metcalf made a little out move and went straight down the middle, and Theismann didn't read the weak safety at all. Bernard Wilson was back there hanging in his area looking for the football. See Robinson, number 56, has Metcalf out in the flat, and Metcalf just takes off straight down the field. Now Robinson's trailing about a, about a foot, but there's Bernard Wilson coming from his safety position. Nice play by Wilson, good anticipation. Big turnover for the uh, Eagles. Fifth interception for Bernard Wilson, 
Eagles have a 7-6 lead. You're looking at Joe Gibbs. He's got the charts. He's got a new young staff. In his first year, they're still a very good football team. They've come a long way. They're just turnovers. The big one, the interception, of course, uh, Joe Theismann just moments ago. Booker Russell, Gilbert Montgomery in the eye. Montgomery, number 31. Ooh, darts out to the 47-yard line. Mark Murphy having to fall on him there. Boy, Wilbert gets it in high gear. 195 pounds, and he must ice down the whole body after a game. He has a million nicks and bruises. <laughs> How many? Don't forget, next Saturday, Wake Forest against Marquette, right here on CBS on NCAA Basketball. Live from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And then next Saturday, a special NFL today before the Vikings play the Lions. That's 3.30 Eastern time, and it always starts with the NFL today. First and 10 out of the 47. Handoff to Booker Russell, the 228-pounder, gets into Washington territory, and Dexter Manley makes the tackle. The Savelt 228-pounder. <laughs> Booker's he, problem has been uh, weight. And I think that whole position's been a problem, though, you know. Oh, yeah, it started with Leroy. Leroy. Leroy yeah. Harris went down in preseason. Then uh, Harrington. Harrington went down against the Redskins in that first game. And then last, uh, of course, on Monday night, Oliver, the young rookie, also got a sprained ankle, and he's out. This is fourth fullback. The toss to Montgomery. Ooh, darts inside. Looks right. like he has the first down. Well, that's the guy they can't lose. Wilbert can also throw the football. He was on that same high school team down in... Greenville, Mississippi with Jimmy Giles. How would you like to have those two in high school playing for you? I tell you, Wilbur Montgomery's a good man, too. I had the chance to go to a big ceremony. They had him for Wilbur Montgomery Day at Abilene. He went to Abilene Christian in Abilene, Texas, and, boy, they love him there. He's, he's a fine guy as well as being a uh, very special athlete. 29 yards on six carries, and you're right. Wilbur Montgomery. Once he started playing for the Eagles, it's been 1,000 yards every season. Jaworski screening to good Charlie set, Smith to get some good blocks. Smith down over the 20 inside the 10 for the six yard line. Jarris White finally making the tackle. And what a play by Charlie Smith. To call it back. Uh, Stan Walters is really unhappy over the sideline, and as are the Eagles. I, we can't see the flag, but uh, I. So I still don't see a flag. I, yeah, no. I do. Now it's down around the 13 yard line. Pushing. It's, it's way down there. Stan is back at the line of scrimmage. He threw up his arm, so he must have. It's going to be after then the completion, so the completion will count, and they'll mark it off from the point of the completion. So the Eagles will get a first down out of it. Dick Vermeil is checking closely. Illegal block above the waist. Number 84 offense during the run. They still have the necessary yardage for a first down. Keith Crepley down there trying to make sure Charlie Smith Got to the end, so <laughs> look at it. What am I supposed to do? Yeah. <laughs> well, it was explained well. Stan Walters made the key block over there. He got Joe Lavender, and once Lavender was blocked, when Walters pulled out, Charlie Smith had the left sideline, and he motored until Crepley made the mistake. A 32-yarder for homeboy Smith. First and 10 of the 21. Inside hand, that's what Wilbert Montgomery almost breaks it, gets inside the 15. Wilbur does not have the great lateral moves downfield that perhaps a Dorsett has, but he really runs cleanly into the holes. He is perhaps the quickest back at hitting the hole as it opens before it closes. I saw him. Uh, here's a score. St. Louis is now pulled ahead of the Saints, but I saw exactly what you're talking about in the Pro Bowl, and with all the great backs that have been there, when Wilbur Montgomery's there in the Pro Bowl, Detroit now up on Green Bay 10-0, Wilbur is the quickest into the hole. Wilbert Montgomery, this time a good tackle by Olkowitz, keeps him from getting much. I would classify him quicker than Tony Dorsett now. In a 100-yard dash, Dorsett would probably beat Wilbur Montgomery, but quickness, and Montgomery's fast for the 100 yards, but that quickness into the hole, which is very critical, the Gail Sarris type quickness, and he could hit a hole faster than anybody I've ever seen. Wilbert has got that kind of quickness into the hole. Wilbert received the Most Valuable Player Award uh, the other night. The Bakers Club gave it to him, and he used to send 
a designated recipient, but this time he got up himself and did a nice job talking on his feet. Second down three, big call, Montgomery running on his feet. Oh, he's hit hard. Perry Brooks in on the tackle. I don't believe he got the first down. This is the this is called the coach's tester right here. It's going to be short, a few inch, inches short. I'd go for it. I would imagine uh, with a win meaning that you get a wild card spot, that the Eagles will probably let it all go today. Win this one, get into the wild card playoff situation, then worry about going to Texas later. We're going to go. This is when they say coach is tester. If they don't make it, people are going to second guess, but uh, it's a good decision. And so the defensive bunch will come in for the skins that'll put some beef on the line of scrimmage. We look like we have about a foot for a first down deep in Washington territory and 7.03 left before halftime. Well, Booker tried one of these big ones, third and one against the Dolphins. I think that was a turning play in the game when they had that ball about midfield and the Dolphins stopped him. Who are they going to give it to this time? I think Wilbur will get the ball. I would imagine Wilbur will get the ball. If not, he's going to be mad. Montgomery and Booker Russell in a pro set. A three tight end offense. There's Carmichael in motion. Here's Wilbur Montgomery. Dances through the hole, gets the first down. Just inside that 10 yard line. Okowitz making the tackle. He saw uh, Carmichael pass and Jaworski and tapped him on the fanny there a little bit. They're not real close friends on account of that, but he's just saying it's about time to snap the ball. I'm in position to block that guy on the outside, and of course he got the key block on the outside on Manley, so that was a uh, strategic smack on the back. Booker Russell making a pretty good inside block there, too. Montgomery now 40 yards on 10 carries. First and 10 now, 6.09 left in the second period. Back into the eye. Wilbert Montgomery inside, gets over the pile to the five yard line and dragging Redskins as he goes. Mendenhall taking a ride, big number 76. That is a racehorse. I remember one time in preseason training, one of the rookies knocked Wilbert down, and about seven Eagle veterans went over and grabbed the young person by the throat and said, that, that's half our franchise. Don't fool with it. I tell you, if I was a quarterback, I would have been over there, too. I wouldn't want to lose that. <laughs> Second lose down. Ron Montgomery. Second down and five on the five. Preply in motion, and Jaworski's going to throw it. Quickly. Caught and dropped by Charlie Smith on his back in the end zone. Well, I'd say that was dropped by Charlie Smith, but Jarris White could have had an interception right there. The ball looked like uh, White had a shot at it also. Charlie Homeboy Smith with a big 32-yard screen pass and run set up this drive. Campfield now comes in for the Eagles. Lamar Parrish is in for the skins. It's a little down and in there. We get it a little bit late, but Jarris White, number 45, went across that ball and probably uh, went through his hands. He had a shot at it, and he looked back and was disappointed. Of course, Smith almost made a uh, acrobatic catch out of it. It's shotgun time, very close on the five-yard line. Jaworski with time, lobbing for Campfield. Campfield has his second touchdown of the game. Well, that's a nice play right there. Rich, Rich Malott. Rich Malott got beat on that, and Jaworski laid that up there nicely for Canfield, and he beat Malott to the outside, and it's one of those alley-oops, but the uh, guy they threw it to was Canfield. Unexpectedly, I don't think the Redskins were looking for that. Right there is where he beat Malott, and now Jaworski lays it up. Let's the receiver run under it. He didn't drill it. Puts the ball perfectly in position for Canfield, and uh, it's a touchdown. Big play. Nice pass. Tony Franklin now trying to get some warmth into his right leg, and an extra point would help him right here. With it. It's blocked. It was low to start with. It was blocked. And there's the extra point. Each kicker has missed an extra point now. Jarris White got his hand on it, but it was low coming out. 13 to 6. Washington trailing. Darren Starbuck in Washington, a 13 to 6 
Philadelphia lead. The second quarter has been green and white, I guess you could say. Franklin kicking off in the 35. It's a short kick. Nelms, the most dangerous one at the 17 yard line. Nelms very quickly out over the 35. He's an exciting guy, isn't Boy, he? Boy, can he motor. Unbelievable. He does it time and time again. The best in the business. They're talking about maybe using him on offense next year. He's so good and versatile. And here we have the scoring drive. And Jaworski, again, was on target for the pass. Uh, Wilbur chewed up most of that, uh, that yardage with some big runs. But good drive. A good news, bad story. There's nothing uh, uh, <laughs> more concerning than the good news of scoring a touchdown, the bad news of mix missing an extra point. And it's haunted both these teams today. And it could prove out to be a factor before the game's over. Under five minutes left before half. Play action pass being rushed by Jerry Robinson. And Joe Washington gets hit at the 40-yard line and hard. LaMaster buried Washington. Jerry Robinson came very close to making Theismann put that ball away. Here's Robinson. It's the blitz. The outside linebacker coming all the way this time. And Theismann knows he's in trouble right here. Drops it off to Washington and LaMaster uh, collars him. LaMaster had eight solo tackles against the Dolphins. And the one thing you can say about the Eagle defense, they play every day and hard. They were superb in both the losing games of the last two weeks. Inside handoff, Joe Washington finds a little bit of a hole to the 45. Chesley making the tackle along with Carl Hairston. And one thing about these Eagle linebackers, they make uh, quite a few interceptions but across the board there. There's about six or seven. What they, they play a zone concept, but it's, it's really an area coverage. If a receiver comes into their zone, they'll pick him up man to man, and most teams don't do that. They'll look at the quarterback and play the zone. The Eagles, when they see someone in their area, they'll take him man to man. So those backs hooking up in the seams are pretty well covered, even though it's a zone concept. Art Monk's only had the one little screen slip screen. Would you think they might be getting the ball to him? Monk is their big play guy. He's got 46 catches. Uh, he's been shut down most of the day, and that would be a pretty good bet. The Redskins burn a timeout. Number seven comes over to find out what the coach really wants. 13 to six, Philadelphia. Just by Camfield from Jaworski, who is having a good throwing afternoon here in the chilly atmosphere of Washington, D.C. Fizer back on third down and two. Across the middle, intended for Joe Washington, I believe, at midfield, and Chesley LeMaster did a high-low job on him. No, it was Metcalf trying to come across. See, that was the, an example of that defense right there. You know, I think Theismann thought that uh, Washington was man-to-man, -man, but he really wasn't. Ch Chesley picked him up and stayed with him, and LeMaster was waiting right over there, and it, it was a zone basically with Chesley following Washington across, so Washington couldn't hook up, and it's confusing, and it's tough to hit the backs and the tight end into that well disciplined Philadelphia defense. Wally Henry back to take the punt, averaging a little over 70 yards. Connell's kick. It's real good hang time on this one. Henry at the 12, doesn't fair catch. It's going to run it. Wow. Bulldogging tackle by Clayt, who's downfield very quickly. Looked like something from the National Rodeo. <laughs> Yeah, Ricky got him, number 35. Don't forget the doubleheader, the Giants against the Cardinals, and, of course, the battle at Texas Stadium, these Eagles against the Dallas Cowboys. This game will play a big role in how significant this game will be here, Dallas, Philadelphia, next week in Dallas. Well, the great football that's left, very few teams are eliminated from something. The Eagles have a chance at the uh, division title yet, and it's important. That's that home field advantage, no wild card game. They need to win three of them here, Dallas, and then the last one in Philadelphia against St. Louis. The Eagles with poor field position on the 14. Booker Russell gets the call, a fullback. A little bit of a crossbuck action that time. Monty Coleman made the tackle. Well, it's important to get that home field advantage. Yep, and Vets Stadium, the Cowboys hate to go up there. The Eagles don't like to go to Dallas. See, I even got snowballed up there in the Vet Stadium last year in that final game. Well, everybody's been stoned at one time or the other at Vet Stadium. <laughs> Remember when they gave Santa Claus a bad time a few years ago? But, yep. but I have to admit, it was a bad-looking Santa Claus. I ran through that tunnel. Never took my helmet off. Well, they loved you in Philadelphia. Yeah. 
average yards on first down. Boy, Philadelphia averaging nine yards a shot. Jaworski's hot. It's second down and nine. The draw play to Wilbur Montgomery. Dave Butts makes a tremendous play defensively. Big number 65. I suppose if you're drafting, uh, Bobby Beathard and company will be looking for a couple of defensive linemen to go along with Butts and Brooks. And They've talked about that. They've talked about uh, the fact they might even go to a 3-4 next year. They feel they have more depth at linebackers and they might experiment with it in the offseason. The 3-4 is an excellent defense. Three-man rush, four linebackers. Of course, if you, the Redskins feel they have more personnel at linebacker and they might switch that defense. I think it's a good defense anyway. I think it's a good, solid defense in the NFL and one that uh, they should seriously look at it. I think the Cowboys are, have even talked about looking at it. Jaworski goes to talk to Vermeil, and Mark Murphy went over to talk to Mr. Gibbs. Two minutes left before half. 55, the preceding message was furnished by the National Football League. Butts was right on cue. He makes a great defensive well, play, and they roll his public service announcement. Huh? I'll tell you, Butts is having a good year. We've seen quite a few Redskin games, and he's been solid and consistent the whole season. And he needs size, though. He's only 288 this year. 52 extra large. Jersey <laughs> we've mentioned a few times. He's a big one, but a good one. A big call. Third down and five. A nice Santa Claus. Carmichael and Smith are flanked to the right. Billy Canfield's the man in motion on the shotgun. Dumped over to Wilbert Montgomery. A good block. And Wilbert Montgomery out over the 30 die. He has the running room. Spins and gets inside Redskin territory to the 49. Mark Murphy holding on. A good block on Dave Butts sprung Wilbert Montgomery loose. He made a fancy move right at midfield, didn't he? He did, and you mentioned the block. That was a critical block. Dave Butts did a nice job, got to the outside, and Ron Baker, number 63, just cut him down, and that that really sprung Montgomery for the big uh, the big run down the side. And watch this block right here. There's Baker, number 63, just get we miss Butts. I don't know how we miss him. He's so big, but he was out of the camera. And there's Montgomery makes a couple good moves, but it was a block by Baker that sprung sprung him loose. And a well-designed play by the Eagles. <laughs> Look at this little move here. He almost lateral to Morris, I believe, the offensive center. Timeout three many. Philadelphia has burned one. And of course, Theismann did earlier. Dallas, Baltimore. Who scored for the Cowboys? Ron Spring scored on a run, and Carano's in at quarterback. Danny White is being ready for the Eagle game next week. I wonder who's playing quarterback for Baltimore. Maybe Ursay is. <laughs> At halftime, Brent Musburger and Herb Cross will bring us all up to date from the studio in New York. And Georgia Frontieri is the feature at halftime, the owner of the Los Angeles Rams. San Francisco on top of Cincinnati 7-3. The Bengals now have a field goal to get into that. Shotgun formation, 146 left before halftime. Here's Jaworski, he's had a good first half. Jaworski really throws a rifle. It's taken by Smith, number 81, gets inside the 35. Ron Smith picked up from San Diego a couple of weeks ago. He's got the speed that the Eagles need. Jarris White made that tackle. It's a hurry up. He's a little confused right now. Ron is doing the system, and he's moving from side to side. They get lined up. It's a hurry up offense. 20 on the clock. Jaworski now will stop it. Throws for Smith who makes the catch. And it's going to be called no good. Wow. Pretty good catch, but it did stop the clock. Jarris White making the tackle right at the moment of truth. I'm glad Smith found his position that time. He was going back and forth because he was a prime receiver. <laughs> he had a little trouble in San Diego. They wanted to run a, a kickoff back when they were having some troubles on a Monday night game, and he refused to go in, but he's come to Philadelphia, and if you know Dick Vermeil, there's no use making the plane flight unless you're ready to work and play. Looks like Smith has shown up to work. So he's got some speed, too. The Eagles need some speed at that wide receiver position. Good receivers, but they don't have that blazer out there, and Smith might be the man. Ball's on the 34. It's shotgun. A little bit of a rush. Jaworski going for Smith, and he's cut off neatly by Lamar Parrish. And nobody knows better how to do it than number 24. Even with a bad knee and all, he's still one of the premier cornerbacks in football. 
it's a bit chancy right there. They're not in field goal range yet. They need to get another first down to, to make sure they have a shot at the field goal. They got plenty of time, two timeouts left. But this third down play right here is a is a big one. That would be a 52 yard field goal if they tried one from this position. The tackles are doing a great job blocking, pass blocking. I'm talking about Walters and Sizemore on that shotgun. They're, those outside rushers can sort of lean around the horn. They're doing a pretty good job. Numbers on Jaworski. Here's Har Harold Carmichael's going to catch this one on the blitz. They're coming out of it. And he didn't get it off in time. That's what they did. Peters and uh, Murphy were uptight, and Jaworski was audibly in the blitz, and they came out of it when they when they heard the audible. It's a game up there sometimes. If they think the quarterback's audible, they'll come out of it. And of course, that's what Jaworski did, and it took too much time. Quarterback though has the darn much responsibility, Roger. You have to set people, and you have to think about the total concept too. Don't? That's why he gets paid more than everybody else. <laughs> Delay of game. Offense, still third down. Well, you never even had an agent. You represented yourself with Tex Ram, and you're a rich <laughs> man to prove that you don't always need an agent. Sure. I know you have your recess money. I bet on that. Third down and 15 on the 39. 110 left before halftime. The blitz. I think so this time. There they come. There's the play to Carmichael. Dumped over to Carmichael. And Carmichael slipped. Boy, Bird Lavender really dug Harold Carmichael, his old buddy on the 35, and Carmichael still on the ground. Now Carmichael tripped before the ball got there. And of course, that's the down and in, the slant in, and uh, you know, teams use it so much now that the defensive backs are, really should take it away. Don't let the guy get inside, and this time it was tough. But watch Carmichael get stripped up, and he gets off the ball late, too, for some reason. Should it be thrown right high there, to him? The ball was in front. He kind of stopped. Wouldn't and, you uh, throw it upstairs, though? Wouldn't you hang it up above everybody, including Lavender? Well, there's a chance you can do that. You can go with the slant ends of the uh, the quick ones up in the air, the, the quick sidelines anytime you see a blitz. And they're automatic calls. The receivers have to adjust to them. Runniger's first punt of the day. He's had 15 inside the 20-yard line. The coffin corner, as somebody once said. It's a good hanging punt heading for the right corner. Nelms is getting away from it. Wow. This hits right on the point. It's going to be on about the three-yard line. A tremendous punt by Maxie Runniger. Man, he airmailed that one right out of bounds. That was, a, that was a punt. He was telling me one day that it's better to go ahead and airmail it out rather than try to let the ball hit and bounce out because you have very little control if you you put it on the deck. That was some punt. How do you like field position like that when you're a quarterback? Theismann's uh, backed right up to the clock. Well, the Redskins, they have only 57 seconds left, so they'll probably at least uh, stay out of trouble down here, but any other time in the game, of course, that uh, would have helped the Eagles even more. Seismer, keeping it out of trouble, takes it on a quarterback sneak. The Eagles will use their timeouts. They've got two of them left, and they'll try to keep the Redskins down there. I don't think they can do it. And against that kind of a defense that's so darn sophisticated and so good, you don't want to be running anything really crazy, do you? No, and I... I They'll probably maybe have a chance to block a punt with a few seconds that'll be left. But they'll not be able to uh, get the ball back with 49 seconds to go. The Redskins have two plays, and the Eagles only have one timeout, so they'll probably get a chance to maybe block a punt or do something on the punting specialty area. It's Coach Vermeil. Of course, there's Joe Theismann. You know who his backup quarterback was in high school, South River, New Jersey? His backup quarterback. This is going to get you. That's a number 88. Drew Pearson. You knew that, huh? Yeah. I played with Drew, and he told me that. <laughs> First day you met him, huh? I used to be a quarterback. That's right. Everybody wants to be a quarterback till Sunday afternoon. What's great is those practice uh, sessions on, on Saturdays before the game. You know, it's kind of a just get warm session. All the linemen out there trying to be sure. quarter, quarterbacks and receivers. Uh, they want to touch the ball. They never touch the ball. The backs and quarterbacks can't even find the football in practice sometimes. All right, second down and nine. Here's the handoff to Joe Washington. And Jerry Robinson eats him up at the four-yard line. Another timeout. Eagles called another one. So the other thing defensive linemen like to do is call timeout. You know, Charlie Johnson, Clark, Harrison, all those guys were up at the tee. 
That defensive line for the Eagles has got some depth to it with Mitchell and Clark and Brown behind Harrison Johnson and, and, and Harrison. And really, Mitchell's the only guy that's the high draft choice, the number one draft choice. And Charlie Johnson's the seventh, Harrison's the seventh, uh, Dennis Harrison's a fourth. Uh, Greg Brown was a free agent, and he's got an interesting story. I'm sure all the people in Philadelphia know, and Ken Clark was a free agent. So they have really assembled themselves a very fine defensive line with only one high draft choice. And big Claude Humphreys back with a knee injury, might be ready for the playoffs. Uh, he's been sort of their, the old man pass rusher that sort of taught these young guys how to win, and he's, he's not able to play right now. Great team guy. Claude is a good leader. Taught the young guys how to put tape over the ear holes on those cold practice days, the little things that are very important, you know? 44 seconds left. The Eagles are out of timeouts. They lead 13 to 6. Outside handoff. Washington for three or four. See when 36, they're... and they're not stopping the clock this time. You see when the officials wind the clock, coordinate it with the... Now they're... Well, they can't stop it now. Chesney made that tackle. The big fella from Pittsburgh who's going about 238, and he is a load as a linebacker. It's probably going to be about the last play. Johnny Shaw is leaving, and Bernard Wilson is back in on fourth down and five. Our Five, and that's the end of the first half. Two touchdown passes, Jaworski to Billy Camfield. And that good Eagle defense has shut off the Redskins after their initial charge down there. And the missed extra point by Mosley, and of course a missed extra point by Tony Franklin. It's going to be a tough second half, and maybe even a little bit nasty. Right now it's Philadelphia 13, Washington 6. Tom Brookshire with Roger Stavak at RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C. It's getting colder because the sun is getting lower, of course. A 13-6 halftime lead by Philadelphia, and Jaworski, Roger, probably had the best first half I can remember. He's got 188 yards on, on 10 completions out of 17. That's not bad. He had an excellent uh, first. He hit the key plays when they needed them on both drives, and, of course, the turnovers uh, were costly to the Eagles. Redskins took advantage of one, and the Redskin turnover, the Eagles went down and took advantage of it. So it's been a, a well-played game. The, the Eagles have, have really have the yardage, the, the difference. The passing, of course, as you see in the stats, is the, the significant difference. And the Eagles dominated from the middle of the first quarter on to the half. So it should be... Uh, and when you have that defense that you know is a rock, the way that the Eagles play it, you can almost uh, play... A, a play a Theismann's had like a tough time. He's had... 7 of 12 for 65 yards. Uh, you can play with a good defense, can't you? I think the uh, Redskins are going to have to hit big plays. Here's Jaworski, of course, the two touchdowns, the one interception, and Theismann is going to have to hit some big plays. They're not going to move the ball consistently against this uh, Philadelphia defense. The defense really came ready to play today. Marion Campbell has got them geared up, psyched up. They're, they're moving, they're hustling, they're hitting, and the way you take advantage of a defense like that is with a little bit of luck, some good execution, but mainly hitting some big plays. And Theismann has the people that can do it. Ronell Young now, of course, is playing the left corner, or is not playing the left corner, and Blackmore's in there. So if you were trying to get Art Monk loose for a long one, I suppose you would try to work on uh, the young fellas playing the corner for, you know, he only played there spasmodically over the last couple of seasons. Well, that's true. If you can get him isolated in that man-to-man -man situation, but a lot of times he gets some help over there. And, of course, he's a... You know, a good cornerback. He's come in a, a lot of the nickel situation, so he's got some experience back there. Vermeil talking about, you know, another 30 minutes, fellas, and we're in the wild card playoff situation, and then we'll worry about perhaps the division title if that comes up down in Texas. You can see it right there. Minnesota, Detroit, Tampa Bay, and Atlanta all locked at 7-6. That's going to change the day. The Giants still not out of it. St. Louis uh, remotely involved, and Green Bay has a lot to do with it. Of course, they're playing... Detroit today. There's some interesting matchups there. Of course, Tampa and Atlanta are going at it today, so that that situation will be uh, solved there. Okay, Mosley is going to be kicking off. The Eagles will receive and get the football. Billy Kemfield, who's been the Eagles star in this first half, is back at the goal line. 
This is week 14 in the NFL. Does his leg look as big as it used to when you played against him when you were at Dallas? Looks pretty big. He yeah. wears those extra socks. What he has is extra socks over there, and it's like a pendulum. He's got that extra weight at the bottom of the, the leg, and he can kick. Uh, he feels he can kick better that way. You know, I, I sent him a dozen socks. I got him fined one time because he had a holy pair of uh, superstitious socks on, and I said, look at that awful sock, and the league fined him for being out of uniform. So I, I told Mark I'd send him some free socks. What a nice guy. Yeah, yeah really. He got fined 150 bucks. It wasn't too good a deal for him. Mosley from the 35 to start the second half. 13 to 6 Eagles lead. Here's a high kick. My gosh, this is a four second hang time and a kickoff. Camfield at the 15. Straight ahead. Camfield breaks out over the 30. He goes helmet to helmet with three or four different people. Big number. Uh, Clayton was in there, number 35. He's made three tackles on special teams already today. And Lowry also in there. So Jaworski gets the first offensive shot at it in the second half. Now you followed this Eagle team uh, a lot being in Philadelphia. Why isn't Canfield playing more in the running situations? Well, Vermeil doesn't think that he's a fullback type player. He'd love to have somebody else and have him in there on the third downs and the, you know, the good passing situations. But that's a good question. <laughs> First and 10 out of the 30. High formation. That's Booker Russell and Wilbert Montgomery. That's Montgomery. Out to the 36-yard line. Dexter Manley making the tackle. Manley probably doesn't play the run as well as the pass rushes. He's the rookie out of Oklahoma State playing right in for Washington. Buffalo took advantage of his... Lack of physical uh, presence against the run. Well, he's not not real big, Tom. That 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 hurts also. He's quick, very quick, for as big as he is. But when you start playing that defensive end, you got Stan Walters and a few of these other guys beating on you, and you're only about 240 pounds. It'll it'll take its toll after a while. A pickup of six, second down and four. Pro set is Montgomery again, running left, breaks out, stumbles to the 47-yard line. Mark Murphy falling on him there. Looks like Wilbert's. Uh, Gone into overdrive in the second half. Of course, Booker Russell's uh, big job with a guy like Montgomery is is to block. And that eye formation, that fullback is just critical as far as making the key block, kicking an end out or kicking a linebacker out. And this drive with Montgomery running the football looks similar to the one in the second half when, or in the first half when Camfield caught the pass. Montgomery was slicing, going off tackle, running the, the ball extremely well. Green Bay up 14 to 10. What a division the Central is. Here's the outside play for Charlie Smith. Now they're going to give that to him. Uh, How did he get the feet down? He, he did an catch. excellent job there. We have the Redskins kind of covering us up, but he had got his feet in. We'll see on the replay how he did it. But Jaworski is back, fakes off the eye formation, throws out man-to-man -man defense to the outside, and Smith beats him going to the sideline. Now he gets those feet down. Good job. He just drags that right foot and makes an excellent play. Charlie Smith, deceptive speed. He can get on top of you if you're a defensive back very quickly. Wears those gloves. Almost made a touchdown catch in the end zone. Dallas now. Another Ron Springs two-yard touchdown run. And the cow folks are moving it, Rods. Here's the misdirection draw play to Montgomery, and it loses some yardage. Brad Dusick making a very quick and good play. He really submarine that time. Dusick went underneath the blocker and got a handle on Montgomery. That's probably Montgomery's actually first loss in the backfield. Watch Dusick, number 59, kind of submarine his way in here underneath the blocker and put his right hand out. And of course, uh, Manley was out there to do some damage also. And Big Dave Butts was sort of flowing through there, uh, throwing people around as he made his move. There's Dexter Manley. And he can pass rush. It's second down and 13, back on the 44. Jaworski now dumps it off and just misses, misses Spagnola at the 35. The one thing the uh, Eagles know, I'm sure, scouting the Redskins, when the Redskins start getting beat on first down with the run, they'll start blitzing their linebackers. Dusak or Olkowitz might blitz or Monty Coleman. And what you need to do then is throw some quick passes on first down because the secondary is in man-to-man -man coverage. Here's Manley rushing on Walters. Walters does a good job. Keeps good position on him and takes him all the way around the corner. Jaworski steps up in the pocket, and he really couldn't find the receiver. Good coverage. 11 out of 19. 
19 for Jaworski. It's third and 13 on the shotgun. The blitz isn't on. Jaworski with a lot of time. Oh, misses Canfield. Almost intercepted by Rich Ballot. One of those Penn State linebackers. Bill Friel, my spotter, says there are 43 Penn State football players playing the National Football League right now. That's almost a franchise. That's a whole team. Well, this again is their special defense. They bring in Lamar Parrish, Mike Nelms, and Jaworski is trying to find someone. He goes to Canfield late, but Malott plays him pretty well. Knocks the ball down, and Canfield didn't have much of a chance in that one. Ruddick, your second punt. He's standing on the Eagle 40-yard line. Not much pressure on it. It's a pretty good kick now. Nelms is going to watch this one hit at the six and take an eagle bounce. And then it's scooped up, and then Nelms ends up with it out over the 10-yard line. Good play on Nelms' part. Once it's, <laughs> once it's touched by the offense, even if Nelms would have fumbled right there, it wouldn't have uh, mattered. They still would have kept possession once it was touched by an eagle. Now the Redskins with uh, the first possession of the second half. There's Nelms. Well, you could miss him just watching him walk through the lobby of the hotel. 12.21 left in quarter number three, and that lead is the same. There's Joe Gibbs. Uh, Roger, if you were in the strategy uh, ballpark, what would you try to do to get some points? Joe's got to pull a big play out of the hat. That's what they need. They're going to have to hit something, an eagle mistake, or hit a big play, someone break a play, quick, break a run. Quick turn in by C. Tackled quickly by Jerry Robinson and... Herm Edwards was there. Herm Edwards is one of those steady playing cornerbacks that you just don't beat very often. And it's hard to methodically move the football against the Eagles. They've, they play very well. They're coached extremely well. They're well disciplined. They're in the right position. They don't make many mistakes. But again, you have great athletes in offense, and you're going to just have to beat somebody with a key play, a big play. And right now, the Redskins can't find that man. Five-yard pickup by C on second down and five. This is Joe Washington, who's been contained pretty well. Gets out over the 20. Robinson making another tackle. Jerry Robinson, the number one draft choice, the first one the Eagles had had in about six or seven years. He is some player. A year ago on this same turf, he picked a fumble up and I think went about 50 yards against the Redskins. I tell you, I admire the Eagles staff, the organization there. This great defense, and it is a great defense. They've allowed less than 15 points uh, this year over the last three or four years, and yet there's only one first-round draft choice starting on that defense, and that's Jerry Robinson. That's a good point. Third down and one. A handoff to Joe Washington. Carl Harrison hits him in the backfield and pulls some equipment off, but Joe gets the first down. LeMaster making the final stop. Of course, Roy Nell is a first round, but he's not starting today. Pulled his Black shoe off, huh? there, and Joe ran right out of his shoe. Hit a flat tire there. On the rims, as they say in Oklahoma, right? <laughs> Points allowed, and that's what puts the W's on the board. That's it. John Riggins is in the game. He hasn't had many carries the last couple of weeks. Washington has 36 yards now on 15 carries. Far below his average. That's Metcalf in motion. The fake to Riggins, and now the screen to Metcalf is coming back against the grain. He's in trouble. And it's going to lose back to the 12-yard line. Jerry Robinson making another tackle. That's about four in a row. Well, that's a his, hit, hitting, hustling defense there. Dennis Harrison and Charlie Johnson really were out there very quickly out in that flat. They recognize screen right away, and the way they do it, they see a tackle pull or a guard pull, and boy, they just take off like a bat out of heck getting out there. And here they are, both of them. They're out there support, and they need to be out there when the cutback by Metcalf, and of course, uh, finally, a bat Jerry out of heck. A bat out of heck. Boy, you're something. Can I say that? <laughs> I didn't say that. You certainly did, Roger. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Second down and 18. Theismann on straight drop back. He has time. And C is open. And this is going to be incomplete. The 30-yard line. Herm Edwards was hounding him. Boy, Theismann thought that one should have been caught. Well, I think everybody in the stadium felt that should have been caught. Because it should have been caught. C made a nice, nice catch earlier in the game. But he dropped that one. Why wouldn't the Redskins have Joe Theismann signed? This is his year. He's out of contract when this is over. Some people said that Shula wants him down in Miami, and others say he may end up in San Diego. Have you heard any scuttlebutt on that? Heard rumors of New England. 
I think Joe Gibbs are, is going to end up keeping him here in Washington. He'll get the thing straightened out. He's a great athlete, great talent. You just can't get rid of a guy like that with someone in return, but there has been a lot of rumors. He's a young body, though. He takes good care of himself. He's a good athlete, right? Excellent athlete. There's a conversion on third down. That's a draw play to Joe Walsh, who gets outside and makes three people miss, and Logan pulls him down on about the 29. Yeah, I'll tell you, Monk got uh, shaken up on that play. Joe's over there talking to Monk. He wants to make sure J Monk's all right. But Joe Washington almost broke it, almost made the kind of play they need, and that's what they need. They need to make a big play, big run, and Joe Washington fell about three or four yards short of it. Some player averaged over six yards a carry in Oklahoma. That's the kind of college team I should have played defense for. You don't worry too much about that. Here's Connell's punt. Wally Henry waiting now. Eagles don't usually put a lot of heat on. This is a yeah. tremendous punt. A tremendous punt. Wally Henry at the 20. The 25, that's it. Excellent coverage and a tremendous punt by Connell. A five-second hang time job. Clayton him on another tackle. 9.21 left in quarter number three. Billy Canfield, the Army brat, raised by his father, who was an officer in the service, and he has two touchdown catches. Big ones, because that's the Eagle lead, 13-6. Balls in the 25. Smith in motion. High handoff to Booker Russell, a big pullback, gets straight ahead, breaks down over the 40 to the 43. Brad Dusick falling on it. Oh, that play opened up quickly. The fullback off the eye. Well, the Booker just kept, kept bouncing in there. Probably his longest run of the season, I'm sure. Kenny must have gotten a good block, he and Morris. Kenny Morris and Baker at the point of attack inside that tough area with between Brooks and, and Butts, and he just breaks it down the, down the seam, and he keeps bouncing around. And, of course, Booker's got the, uh, the strength. He just doesn't have the quickness. Up to the 42-yard line. It's the first down. Smith in motion. And the drive on the eye to Wilbert Montgomery. Into the Redskin territory to the 45. Jarris White hanging on. You know, the Eagles have, as we mentioned, have dominated this game. But you look at the scoreboard, and it's, it's somewhat similar to Miami, except, of course, they're moving the ball much better in the second half. But they need to get something out of it. That last drive was like this. They moved down. They got nothing. This drive here, they need to get something out of this drive, whether it's a field goal or a touchdown, the way they're moving the football. 76 yards on 16. Montgomery, the toss back to Montgomery. Down to the 36-yard line. Jaworski seems to have the team rolling now. Getting some good blocking by Crepley, too, and Sizemore. Of course, Montgomery takes advantage of John Becker They're signaling in in the yellow coat, the offensive backfield coach. Got to get a lot, lot of uh, credit to Eddie Hughes, too, the coach that was hired by Dick Vermeil in the offseason. He really helped the shotgun out. I think he helped install that with you fellows yeah. years ago, didn't he? Yeah, it's a very creative guy. That's right. Slip screen to Charlie Smith. He crawls forward, has the first down, mostly on his own effort. Joe Lavender there. Now, Lavender uh, learned from the, the last quick screen they hit down to the 10-yard line. This time, Walters couldn't get him. Lavender forced the play a lot quicker. A couple of scores we'll throw at you very quickly here. Dallas leading Baltimore 24 to 6. By the way, Curtis Dickey went 67 yards for a touchdown run for Baltimore in that one. Springs has three touchdowns. Cowboys and Eagles on CBS next week. It's a game nobody should miss. The Eagles fighting for the wild card spot. The Rams, 7-0 over New York at the Meadowlands. That's in the third period. Miami having some trouble with New England there in the third quarter. Shula said that the Dolphins played their best football game of the year on Monday night when they beat the Eagles. He said that was by far their best accomplishment, and I can understand his jubilation over it. First and 10, Jaworski straight back this time. He's got time. He's going for Harold Carmichael, and Carmichael barely keeps Lavender from intercepting the ball. A good defensive play by Harold Carmichael. Yeah, Jaworski did not throw that one particularly well. And there's there's some wind coming out of that corner. The ball got hung up there. And 
he really threw it behind him and didn't get enough on it. The ball would have had to been out in front and Car Carmichael would have had a chance at it. Here's the play where Carmichael had a shot, but of course the ball is short and to the uh, inside and Lavender almost intercepts it. He steps right in front here and actually grabs onto the ball, but Carmichael stuck a hand back and prevented the interception. Looked like Dave Butts might have gotten his big arms up and made Jaworski throw that one a little high. Toss back to Montgomery going to the right side. Wilbur Montgomery to the 27-yard line and hit hard by Tony Peters. Wil Wilbert's heading for 100. And Montgomery that time, though, he knew that Peters was the obstacle and he couldn't make a move on him, and he ducked that head in there. And he's he's a gritty guy. He really knew he was going to get sacked that time and still got probably a yard or two just on sheer determination. Tough games is when Wilbert's the best. In the playoff game against Dallas a year ago, the championship game, he had 192 yards rushing. Almost 200 yards, that's right. Third down and two. This is short yardage. Here's the fake handoff on the play action. Butts is chasing Jaworski. He's going deep and overthrowing everybody. Lavender it looks like he has the interception. It is. Joe Lavender gets the ball for the Redskins out to the 20-yard line. Looks like Jaworski was trying to throw that one away. Well, he saw Montgomery there and uh, really was harassed, and he should not have thrown the ball. And if he was going to throw it, make sure he does throw it away. He should have thrown it just to the sidelines to get rid of it. Don't take the sack. And again, they come up short. They don't get anything out of this drive, and it, it can work against you and work towards the Redskins in a positive way. He probably was trying to throw it away and just didn't get enough on it. The third interception for Bird Lavender in 1981, and it's still that narrow 13-6 score. They're generating some offensive heat right now. Here's that last play. Of course, it was a ball he tried to get rid of. Of course, Lavender came to the Redskins, and the six-round draft choice the Eagles got for Bird Lavender was Wilbert Montgomery out of Abilene Christian. Uh, I guess both teams benefited. 5.20 left in the third period. Here's the Riggins, the handoff on the side. The big fella has better speed than you anticipate, gets to the 36. Bernard Wilson and Randy Logan having to make that tackle. Now the point of attack was that uh, left side of the Eagle line, the right side of the Redskins, and they had a nice uh, nice effort over there with Warren Stark and Melvin Jones uh, even pulled around and isolated his man. There was a big hole there. Here's Bostic doing a good job over the center on Clark, and uh, Stark is going on the linebacker right there, number 59, Al Chesley, and they had nice blocking, and Riggins took advantage of it. And Riggins is big at 228, and he's got good speed. Here's Riggins, toss back, flea flicker time. Going deep, intended for Art Mark, closely covered, and intercepted. They're going to put Mark the ball. Richard Blackmore came up with the interception. Let's see if he was called down back on uh, the 24 or not. The official was going to mark it down there, and all of a sudden he changed his mind and started running for the play, and they're going to let him take the run back to pass the 40-yard line. But nobody was fooled on defense, and Theismann really threw it into double coverage. And I don't think Gibbs is going to appreciate that one. Well, they've had two flea flickers today, one to start the game, and this was a different look this time. Riggins pitched the ball back, but it was excellent coverage. Uh, Wilson's back there. Just two, two men in the, the right spot at the right time. Richard Black for INT. Same score. Tom Brookshire with Roger Staubach in the third period, 4.30 left. Philadelphia clinging to that 13-6 lead. And the football on the 43. Handoff, no yardage. Dave Butts and Perry Brooks making the tackle. Also, you had Dusak on a blitz again on that first down. It's it's tough. The, Red, the Eagles have had some success running the ball, of course, on first down. And the Redskins, when they've made their big plays in first down to stop the Eagles, has been off a of blitz. And that time, Dusak did cause some damage and really prevented the play. Two interceptions, but a good passing day, really, for Ron Jaworski. Two tight ends in the game now. Spagnola and Krepley and wingbacks. Back to Wilbert Montgomery behind Walter's block. 
Montgomery into Redskin territory to the 46. Olkowitz making the tackle. Well, that's a good play for the Eagles at that time. Uh, they took Dusek out. He's been tough against the run on first down. They put Malott in anticipating a pass that time. And, of course, the Eagles went around Malott's side, got a good block on Malott, and went around that side and got the, uh, the first down. Big block by Stan Walters, the big left tackle, huh? That's right. A nice block there. And, of course, uh, once he gets around there, Malott was the key guy, the force man, and he was blocked well. And that got Montgomery his 10 yards. He's got 102 yards, the 700-yard rushing game for Wilbert Montgomery in 1981. Remaining back is Wilbert Montgomery. He's battling to get to the 45, and that's all she wrote. Olkowitz, Coleman together. The Redskins seem to get a little tired on defense in the second half, or particularly the fourth quarter, where we're not there yet. But they spend so much time on the field that some of that uh, viciousness is gone. The Eagles at one time claimed they owned the fourth quarter, and last year they did pretty much do that. This year they've had trouble in the fourth quarter in Miami and Dallas and also in New York. Uh, Second down and eight. The toss back to Wilbur Montgomery. He's closed off by Coleman. Gets back inside and somehow picks up two yards anyway. Perry Brooks uh, nailing Wilbert Montgomery. Boy, Coleman showed up quickly that time. He shows up quickly with that speed of his. And, of course, Parrish is in the game again. And they're in their nickel situation. And this is where the, the test is now for the Eagles. This first down right here could... I feel, and you can't attribute one play to, to being that significant, but after two drives where they were shut down, this is the third chance they've had now to get farther into Redskin territory, and it's a big third down play. Shotgun, Cam feels in there, and also Ron Smith, the new outside Eagle receiver. That's Carmichael going through the formation. Quick out, off Cam Fields' hands, incomplete. Murphy was there. With 1.30 left in the third period, the Redskins have held again. Dick Vermeil can't believe it. Was that catchable? Well, I think if he would have caught it, Murphy was so close, he still wouldn't have got the first down. But it was thrown hard, and it was a little bit high. It was There was a blitz on, and I think Jaworski saw the blitz and got rid of the ball quickly. The blitz was picked up fairly well, and Carmichael broke deep behind the secondary. But again, uh, Jaworski made his decision, and I don't believe he would have got the first down anyway, Tom. Okay, Rudiger's last punt was a great one. That went out on the two-yard line. Nelms is going to let this one hit at the... go into the end zone, and it'll be Washington's ball out on the 20-yard line with just over a minute left in the third quarter. Again, two extra points have made up the 13-6 score. And as you know, in pro football, a lot of crazy things happen because a ball is not round. In regional action, Saturday on CBS Sports. Star with the beard is Bill Berkey, your old friend when he was playing with the Eagles. And with a bad knee, he just can't play. What a great one he was. Some player, huh? Oh, he was. A tremendous leader for the football team. Gave 200% all the time. Here's the first to 10 handoff to Riggins and gets outside. And John Riggins has over 10 yards in a first down. Reggie Wilkes making the stop. It's two big runs in a row by Riggins on the last drive. He had the last run before the interception. He comes right back here. Once Riggins really gets motoring, he can do it. He's got, he's got good speed. He doesn't have the Joe Washington quickness, but he has the speed. And, of course, there's the master getting blocked that time by... Melvin Jones and Chesley is doing a trying to fight off a guy also so there was some good uh, good blocking that time Jones and Grimm and Bostic all did a good job in the interior of that line preventing pursuit out to the outside Riggins with 28 yards gets his carry again running to the right side nobody will ever forget the 65 yard run he had against Dallas a couple of years ago on that afternoon when you guys came back you in particular, Mr. Starbuck, and beat the Redskins. Yeah, the stadium became very quiet after his run. Boy, that was something. I'd never seen a 230-pounder go 60-something yards. Dallas laid it on Baltimore. That would be Mike McCormick's 13th loss in a row, 27 to 6 right now. Dallas has a one-game lead over the Eagles. 
Of course, this game is extremely uh, significant because of the internal wild card uh, and division situation with the uh, tiebreakers. The Eagles cannot afford to lose this game to have a chance at the division. Dallas actually could lose that game, and it would still boil down to next week's game against the uh, Cowboys in Texas Stadium. That was Warren, the tight end, who's getting a jersey replaced. The other one was probably torn off. That's the end of three quarters. Fifteen more minutes left. The Eagles need it for a wild card spot before thinking about Dallas. That's the end of the third quarter. The score is Philadelphia 13, Washington 6. We'll be back to the start of the fourth quarter after this word from your local station. Throw another log on the fire. We've got 15 more minutes. Brookshire and Staubach, and we think this is going to be a real nail biter. It's 13 to 6, Eagles. The Redskins have the ball. John Riggins getting a drive to the outside. He's being cut off. Carl Harrison drove the fullback deep, and Logan made the tackle. Logan really was the force guy, and that's what he does best. Randy Logan is just tremendous against the run. He really puts his body in there, and of course he came across the line of scrimmage, and Riggins had no chance to the outside, and he was also being harassed to the inside, so the Eagles did an excellent job to stop that run. It was a slow developing play, though, wasn't it? It was, and Logan's force across the line of scrimmage, they couldn't get the block on him, and it was all over for Riggins. Third down and five. With Metcalf and Joe Washington behind him. There's C in motion. Well, he's got some receivers that going for Metcalf. Metcalf opened the 42 and drilled at the 43. Let's see who made that tackle. Jerry Robinson, but Metcalf made the catch. Also, C was coming into the middle of the field. Metcalf was going out to the outside and they crossed. And I think Robinson uh, got confused there as far as C and he tried to get around C and it was it was a legitimate tight pick right here and Robinson got a step behind because C coming across and that gave Metcalf the chance to get the first down. Harry Metcalf can still motor and he catches the ball extremely well. Walker in motion. The handoff to John Rick as a big fullback makes the corner and storms into Eagle territory to the 44 yard line. John Riggins on a tear. Logan makes his second tackle. Riggins has had some big runs. He's had nine touchdowns rushing this year, but they've been short. Here he comes around the corner. Good blocking up there. Number 88, Walker gets a block, and Stark did a good job stealing off the inside, and they're also getting on the linebackers. Uh, Jones and Grimm and Bostick are doing a good job preventing those linebackers pursuing to the outside. It's tough to get outside on the Eagles, but Riggins has done it and three times now. And the two tight end offense, reverse motion by Walker, and Riggins now gets to the 40-yard line. The two tight ends, though, gives the remaining back a lot of different holes to run into. Now, Joe Washington was that single back, and the Redskins have alternated Washington and Riggins, and they keep the guy that's hot in the game, and Riggins is hot. 49 yards on seven carries for the big Jayhawker. Green Bay 21, to Detroit 10. Dickey just hit James Lofton with a 15-yard touchdown pass. Chicago, of course, is leading Minnesota. So next week, Green Bay, New Orleans, the Giants, St. Louis, and, of course, Philadelphia, Dallas. Charlie Johnson stops Riggins. The tackle is finally made by Reggie Wilkes. Chalk that one up to Charlie Johnson, though. Excellent escape by Charlie that time. He escaped the right way, escaped to the inside, to the uh, side Riggins was running on, and... Got an arm on him and really saved a uh, potential good size run and actually caused a two-yard two yard loss. Well, Charlie Johnson's a Colorado boy, you know. He came from Buffalo country. He was another one of those seventh-round draft choices that turned out to be the Pro Bowl nose tackle. After high school, he had a little stint in Vietnam, went on to college, and now his success here at Philadelphia has been in the Pro Bowl a few times. Third and eight, that's Metcalf in motion. Theismann quickly back. Going outside to Metcalf, who beats Jerry Robinson to the 30-yard line. Terry Metcalf running that swerve or the fan pattern, and he was open. Now, Robinson had inside coverage, man-to-man -man on Metcalf all the way, and Metcalf just beats him this time. He didn't have anything 
to uh, hinder him like he did see the last time and Metcalf broke to the outside. Watch Robinson. He's man to man going across watching to, watching the inside. He doesn't have any help to the outside and he just takes away too much of the inside. Of course Metcalf beats him to the outside in the first down. The Redskins are moving and they say 13 to 6 score. Two missed extra points. One by each team. Five to 11 of 18 for 80 yards throwing. Now. in the group finished it off. Ricketts is having more success getting to the outside than Joe Washington did. This game's, this game is taking on uh, signs of last week. The Eagles had that seven-point lead, pretty well dominated, but they couldn't put Miami away. And today they've had many chances to put Washington away on three big drives, got nothing. And it's a touchdown difference, uh, touchdown ties it. Big chair for Riggins, who's the eighth all-time rusher in this league. He had 51 yards in a very short stint. There's Gibbs, the coach. What a turnaround his team has done this year. Dyson back on second down. Out in the flat to Joe Washington. Eagles converge. Well, good, good coverage that time. Good pursuit by everyone. The master, number 55, and Bigfoot Harrison. How did he get all the way over there? You can hear Bigfoot when he's right behind you, just walking. You know, he, he has a size 15 shoe. Does that relate to his uh, <laughs> nickname? I, I would imagine, yes. <laughs> Minnesota, I make that Miami over New England now, 21-14. And the Giants and the Rams are all tied. Giants can play that defense with anybody. Sometimes you wonder what game the Rams are playing at all. Third down and eight on the 28th. This is a big play in this football game. Theismann keeping Joe Washington in the block. Theismann the time. Hit C in the hands, and Virgil C cannot hang on to it. Blackmore was there. Uh, that was a tough catch. The ball was very low, but he had a chance to catch it. That's the kind of play you need to, cut, to come up with in a uh, critical situation. But the ball was low. It would have been a, a great catch by C. He didn't make it. Now it's field goal time. Mosley has kicked four of his last eight. And as we know, he can kick 48 and 49 yarders to win games. He did that when they beat Detroit and New York in a row. Four of 11. This will be held on the 35, so we're talking about a 45-yard field goal. The wind is a crosswind. Tiesman's holding. formerly at UCLA, worked under George Allen and Chuck Knox and Ralston at Stanford. And right now, he wants an offensive series desperately out of the Eagles. Campy will wait for Mark Mosley's kickoff. Mosley with that 45-yard bell ringer. One of the two straightaway kickers still left in football. Dan Meyer with Minnesota and this fellow here with the Redskins. From the 35, this is a wow. short, hanging kick taken by Booker Russell at the 25-yard line. Almost an onside kick. Lowry making the tackle. <laughs> if he could run under that, it would yeah. be a live ball, wouldn't it? Right. Don't forget, next Saturday, Wake Forest against Marquette. Glenn Doc Rivers with Marquette against those Deacons from Wake Forest. That's on NCAA football here on CBS. And don't forget, next Saturday, the NFL Today starts it all off. And then the battle, the desperate battle in the Central Division. The Vikings against the Detroit Lions. And each team happens to be trailing right now. And that darn, everybody is still in that division except the Chicago Bears, I think. It's a pretty tough division, too. They've been knocking each other off. And they've won some big games outside the division. The Vikings, the Lions knocked off the Cowboys. So they're playing pretty darn tough football in that division. Even though the race is tight, it could come right. It's going to come down to the final day of that division. Curcio, the young linebacker, the special teams band out of Temple, 
was knocked down a little bit, but he came off under his own power, and Jaworski has got to fire up the offense. The Eagles really have stalled here in the second half. 9.22 left. A four-point lead. Russell Montgomery there in the eye. The toss back to Wilbur Montgomery. He's cut off. Gets back to the 30 as Olkowitz makes the tackle. And boy, they're showing very quickly on the outside now. The linebackers, Coleman that time again, turned the play in very quickly. An eagle is on the field now as I see Dr. DeStefano and Otho Davis and company huddling around a player right on the 30. That's Montgomery. All the eagles are over there now taking a look at him. Concern there is justified. Robert Montgomery, the name of the Eagle game. Otho Davis is talking to him. Vermeil is talking to the coaches upstairs. Jaworski needs some plays. 13-9, 9.07 left. Philadelphia viewers can breathe a sigh. Robert Montgomery is being worked on by Davis. It looks like the top of his left shoulder, but there are the numbers. And what he means to the Eagles, you cannot really describe. It's second down, 12 on the 30. Jaworski straight back. He's got time. Now he's got a hand in his face and throws it. Intended for Charlie Smith, and Lavender knocks it away. Ball a little bit underthrown. I think Lavender misjudged that. He went to knock it away, and he could have really intercepted the ball. Yes, Charlie Smith is going to the corner on Lavender. Lavender plays it very well. The ball is underthrown, but here's where Lavender knocks the ball down, and really he's tall enough where he could have leaped up to intercept the football. A third down and 12. Third and a dozen. There's the bird, man. Jones. The ball's on the 30. 8.43 on the clock, and they're in shotgun. Blitz look. They pull it off. It's a four-man rush. Jaworski with time. Going across the middle. Well, that's going to be close. Wilbert Montgomery back in the game makes the catch. It's going to be a little short, it looks like, of a first, but it may call for a measurement. Boy, Wilbert comes right back, gets into the flow. He must have come right off the bench into the pattern. <laughs> he is really the most dangerous pass receiver on the Eagle team. Well, he can catch it and break the big one. He's got the speed to go all the way on a pass, and, of course, Jaworski just barely missed him in that Miami game. That could have uh, put that game away. You don't go for it here unless you get it. They have it by they the nose. Wilbert knew exactly where he was when he got that ball. Vermeil's happy about it. That's Chuck Pandaric walking around behind uh, Dick Vermeil, the Hall of Famer. There he is back there with his chart. You and he have uh, fingers that go in different directions, almost the same. Baby fingers look like we were clones. <laughs> as far as those fingers are amazing, exactly alike, perpendicular. First and 10 out of the 42. Pro set behind Jaworski. Hand off to Wilbert Montgomery. Oh, he's hit hard. And fumbles the ball. The ball is up for grabs. Let's see who came up with it. Tony Peters made the tackle. Perry Brooks came out with the ball and let the officials make their decision. They might have called him down. Now, I, I, I noticed that the uh, Redskins did not start cheering when the ball was, was down, and it looked like a Redskin had it, but that official might have blown the ball dead. And Montgomery uh, didn't look like he was down when he was hit. I mean, when the ball popped out. Here's where he gets popped right here, and he starts to go down right here. The ball's knocked out. That's a fumble. Now let's see who gets it. Looks like a Redskin had it. That looked like it was a fumble. That definitely was a fumble. It's second down and eight out of the 44. The crowd doesn't like it. Billy Canfield with the ball. Canfield for a first down. Rich Malak making the tackle. If they called Montgomery down. That was a big break for the uh, Eagles. Cam 
Hatfield getting up a little gimpy too. Some other scores. They're all important. The Giants, with a Danello field goal now from 20 yards, have the lead over Los Angeles. The Giants are still alive. Green Bay, 21-17 in the third quarter over Detroit. The Packers are still alive. And Chicago now trails Minnesota 7-3. And yes, the Vikings are still alive. First and 10 out of the 47. 6.50 on the clock. Jaworski, quick drop. Outside pattern. Charlie Smith is knocked away. Bird Lavender right there. Now the ball was again a little bit behind Charlie Smith. Dusak might have even had a hand on that. But the ball was behind and Charlie Smith had an opening. That Lavender though can play good solo stuff, especially on short patterns in front of him. There's Coach Vermeil emphasizing uh, in fact, he's getting Canfield out of the lineup. And he's not too happy with what happened. Calvin Murray, the rookie from Ohio State, is in with Booker Russell. Calvin Murray, number 42, will go out to the right side. There's some confusion. In fact, we're going to put the timeout. There might be a timeout. Jaworski gets it off. The screen pass out to Booker Russell. Tremendous range, and that's the clock that the Eagles are now fighting. Well, Jaworski's fighting himself also with, with three interceptions, the last one, the big play, and this is where he's tested. This is where he earns his big paycheck to pull him out of this rut. 5.51 left, it's second down and 10, no gain on that first play. Jaworski with a lot of time, throws over quickly, and Spagnola with both inside. 
on that pattern. So both tight ends were together. The Bears trying to make it tough on the Central Division winner. It's Chicago back on top now, 10-7. to Miami now beginning to cruise against New England, 24-14. Third down and 10 on the 26. Remember, the Eagles must win this game to get that wild card spot cinched. They trail by two. Shotgun. The blitz is on. Jaworski reads it. Tries to hit Robert Montgomery, and Cody Peters knocks the ball away. A great play by the safety man, number 23, Cody Peters. the punt, standing on the Redskin 29. Runniger, the punt, if he punts. Remember, the Eagles do like to fake this occasionally, and LeMaster, the up back, will run with it. There's a lot of time left. They'll probably kick this one away, Roger, you think? Well, they're going to boom it. They've got time to get the ball back at least once and maybe twice if they can hold the Redskins. A tremendous kick by Runniger. Now it's back to the 21-yard line. Gets away from the tackle, gets to the left side. Now it's to the 41-yard line. A good return by Mike Nelms, and the flag is down. Well, that Nelms is tough. He's a Houdini back there. Flag is down. We'll see what the call is. He's number four in returning punts in the NFC, and, of course, number one in kickoffs. He has a 75-yarder for a touchdown against New England, a 58-yarder against San Francisco. It's going to be holding against Washington. That was an unsportsmanlike call I just saw there. What was that? The return will probably hold, and they'll mark off from point of foul. Redskins get the football. That's what Joe Gibbs is thinking about. Yeah, he keeps walking and walking. That's, this must be unsportsmanlike. 15 yards. That would be pretty uh, flagrant. <laughs> it's about a 30-yard swing there for the Redskins. number 35 during the return. The second foul was a personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 39. They got Ricky Clayton, number 35, with the first one. Well, those guys are really bad guys in that one, weren't they? And Wansley was the unsportsmanlike person. Now the Eagle defense can assert itself. There's five and a half minutes left for Philadelphia to try to get that ball back and get at least three. Double timeout. 15-13. 5.25 left. The ball has been moved from the 14-yard line to the 19-yard line. Five more yards for the Redskins. Uh, Gordon McCarter did not explain this last movement of the ball, but he explained it to Coach Gibbs. Now they're trying to explain it to Coach Vermeil. That's Marion Campbell, back of the coach. He says, okay, 525 left. The league's best defensive unit is on the field. Well, the officials called their own timeout. The accepted penalty for the illegal block is 10 yards and not 15. Explained by Gordon McCarter and handled very well, I might add. That was an official timeout. So the Eagles have three timeouts left, and the Redskins have three timeouts left. Dysman, quick drop, outside to Ricky Thompson. Thompson gets to the 27-yard line, Herb Edwards wraps him up. Well, that's a good play. You know, they're back in their own territory. They only got that two-point lead. They need to move the football and get it out of there, and a couple of runs 
would be very conservative. So they decide to throw the football. I think that's a good play. Second and a long two or three. Redskins have battled back all the way. The Eagles looked like they were going to blow this game away in the third period. They came up short and nothing on the board in the fourth quarter yet either. 4.45 on the clock. Second down and two. Riggins inside. Riggins out over the 30. First down. Chesley LeMaster making the tackle. Well, this is a series the Eagles need to stop the Redskins. They can't, can't give them another first down. What a football game. A strange game in some ways, but they have been banging each other since warm-up. Weisman getting his signal. 4-10 left on the clock, and it's ticking. You know the Redskins aren't going to stop it. A first and 10. Wiggins with 56 yards rushing, and he's the lone remaining back. He gets it again. Big John Wiggins out to the 37-yard line. Hairston under the pile. That's good yardage right there. It's the second about five. The Eagle defense has only been really handled one time this year. The Vikings got 35 points throwing often. But nobody else has been able to really dent that defense. Reveal looks rather subdued and composed. It's tough. That's monk in motion. Second down five. Quick drop. Guys are now going deep for our Monk. Overthrows Monk. He changed the pattern. Blackmore was in a darn good position that time. And Monk can run. Now Jerry Robinson really prevented that throw to the outside. He hustled out there. Bison was trying to get the quick one out to Thompson again, and Jerry Robinson took off. Actually, he really took off a little bit too quick because uh, if he would have been a little coy, he might have intercepted that ball. Bison went to throw it, and Robinson had it red all the way. What a pass rush you're going to see now. They've got Brown, the rookie, at the right end. Bigfoot Harrison at the left. Harrison's moved into left tackle, and Kenny Clark at right tackle. Is this a good time to run the draw? I think the draw would be kind of risky. They need the first down right now. They're going to throw the football. This Trip. is a big play for the Eagles. Trips formation to the right. Joe Washington, the lone back. He gets the inside handoff, and it's nailed by that defense. Kenny Clark making a great tackle, and Connell's going to have to punt the football. Well, you called the draw. Shows you how good an offensive coach I would have been, right? Draw is not a bad call in that situation, but it's risky because they stun in the middle there a little bit, and someone stunts the wrong way. And of course, it was just a good play that time by Clark, and Bostic didn't get his block on Clark, and he filled that middle and forced the punt. And Carl Harrison also, he and Clark were belly to belly, as they say. Good, good defensive play. Here's Connell now. He'll be kicking from about the 26 yard line. Wally Henry back by himself. Gets it off. Ooh, it's a driving kick. Wally Henry's being driven back to the 12-yard line. Gets away from the tackle. Wally Henry dances inside. He's still loose. Gets to the 19-yard line. Redskins all over the place. A good return by Wally Henry. 2.17 on the clock. And a two-point deficit for Philadelphia. Or a two-point lead for Washington. A 50-yard punt by Connell. Other scores, Dallas, 27-6 at halftime. St. Louis, 27-3 over New Orleans. That Cardinal defense is playing pretty darn well right now, too. The Giants, 10-7 over the Rams. First and 10, the ball's right on the 20-yard line. The toss back to Wilbert Montgomery. Montgomery gets a good block on the outside and picks up seven yards. They cut Coleman down that time. He also did a good job getting out of bounds. He stretched his body there to get out of bounds. From Abilene Christian, remember he came out and he had the calcification of the thighs, and some scouts said, I probably can't hold up in this league. Then he ran back a kickoff against the Giants his rookie year. And the next year he was there to stay. He's got another 100-yard game today, Tom. 114, Roger. Third 
fourth down, or second down and three, Barton. Big rush by Dave Batch. Jaworski scrambling. He's going to run for it. Looks like he has the first down and gets out of bounds and stops the clock. 2.04 on the clock. Jaworski is hard as nails. He is tough. Well, he got away that time also. That would have been a big trap back there, and he showed some speed, got to the outside, and got the first down. He was hit by Dennis Thurman in the Dallas game, right in the ribs. He came back. A year ago, uh, Hartenstein for Chicago knocked him out. He came back. He is tough. First and 10 on the 31. Franklin should be getting warm somewhere. 2.04 left. And three timeouts. Jaworski, quick drop. Overthrows Charlie Smith. Lavender was there, and the ball was a real bullet. That was too hard. It was also a little bit behind him. Jaworski in this fourth quarter has, has thrown the ball with a lot of velocity, and it, it seems he's a little tense when he's throwing it because you, you start to do that. You throw the ball a little bit too hard, and that's what he's doing right now. The 159 warning. Philadelphia trailing by two, and the Eagles had the ball. Jaworski is 13 of 31 for 212. Ron has missed his last six consecutive passes. 159 left. The Eagles have to get somewhere inside the Washington 35-yard line to give Franklin a, a legitimate shot. Going to the deep corner pattern, Charlie Smith has it. At the Washington 47-yard line, Jarris White hanging on. Great catch by Charlie Smith. They needed a big play right there. It was a deep comeback route, and he made a nice catch. Was that Charlie Smith, or was it... Uh, I think Ron Smith just Ron came Smith. in. I think Charlie Smith Charlie, made that catch. And Ron just came in to replace him, but Charlie made the catch on the sidelines. Bill Friel just told me that the Eagles haven't scored, and I didn't realize this, in the second half for three straight games. The New York game... The Miami game, now this game. Philadelphia has taken a timeout. Dick Vermeer looking straight into the camera. On Jaworski's right is Pasarczyk, the backup quarterback. Becker is the fellow in the yellow slicker, the backfield coach. The band strikes up, and everybody's thinking, how deep do they have to get? for Tony Franklin to perhaps kick it. The barefooted one is warming up. Johnny Shara is holding for him as he kicks it into a basket over there. Does he have a blue sock on? <laughs> There's his leg just blue from the cold. It's blue. Don't forget, next Sunday's doubleheader, the NFL today starts it all off. Then it's Green Bay against New Orleans, the Giants against St. Louis. And the Eagles against the Cowboys. Right now with 149 left. In Redskin territory on the 47. A first down. Ron Smith is flanked to the left. Harold Carmichael to the right. You better get Harold into this game. He's only made one catch today, Tom. Jaworski on a straight drop back. The blitz is on. Jaworski hangs in there. A great catch by Wilbert Montgomery at the 37-yard line. A diving catch by number 31. And a timeout again is used by Philadelphia. They should have had two plays called right there and shouldn't have wasted the timeout at this time. They should have run up to the ball. That was about a 12-yard gain. A great catch. Jaworski splits that zone right, right between the linebackers and Murphy. And, of course, uh, Montgomery gets the first down. They should have run up and called another play and had another play run. And they only have one timeout left, and that was not the time to uh, use that second timeout. One timeout remaining. A good move in the pocket that time by Jaworski because the blitz was coming from both outside linebackers, wasn't it? That's true. I just wondered if he did uh, have a second play called. I, minute and 38, they needed uh, to save that other timeout. Well, are you as a coach now thinking about field goal with Tony Franklin, or are you thinking about trying to get closer and getting a touchdown, which is probably not as easy, but maybe it's more certain? 
Well, you worry about the mistake, so that's the one reason you think about a field goal, but I would not particularly like to have the game come down to a long field goal to win. I'd like to go for the uh, the score, get as close as possible with the time remaining to, to get in position to score and make your field goal as short as possible. Right now is not the time for a field goal. They need to get the ball in much, much closer than this to have a percentage shot at it. The Eagles on offense, a first and 10 on the 36. Jaworski with Wilbur Montgomery flight to the top. Going across the middle for Harold Carmichael. Carmichael catches it at the 15 to the 14. You said it, Roger. Go to the tall target, the strong big guy, and that's Carmichael. Yeah, see, now they, they have the long completion and call the second play. It's, it's a good thing to do here and throw it out of bounds, but they still could have saved another timeout with the short completion before. Jaworski just threw that into the old dugouts here at RFK. They haven't had any baseball for years. Now, now is the time where you, you start really determine whether you're going to play for the field goal or not. You're in a percentage range of a field goal kicker, and looking at uh, the percentages down there, it's probably 80% that he's going to make a field goal from this area. So you, you weigh that against the, uh, the mistake, the uh, fumble, the uh, interception, or even the trap to get out of that field goal range. Well, good point. Jaworski now has... Wilbert Montgomery, the lone remaining back. Two tight ends are in there. Spagnola, Crepley, and Charlie Smith flanked to the left, to the bottom. The toss back to Wilbert Montgomery behind Jerry Sizemore. Coleman tackles him from behind. Must have made about the 12-yard line. Peters and Coleman together. I would say Tony Franklin's a, a nervous soul over there on the sidelines right now. It's going to come down to him. They made the decision for the field goal with that run. Unless they've got something up their sleeve, but they are in good position for the field goal. He had 29-yard field goal from this position, and probably two more runs will give them in the 25-yard the, uh, range for field goal. Third down at eight. The ball is on the 12. One ten left, a one timeout left. Campfield. Put the wrestler. Charlie Smith and Carmichael to the top. Booker Russell inside. The big fullback breaks the tackle, puts his head down, picks up three or four, and Olkowitz has to stop him. That looks like Murphy's trying to call a timeout. I forgot that pass they threw it bound. That was their last run, so he, he got some good yardage. Actually, it's a five-yard penalty past an extra point for the field goal. So they're on the seven-yard line. It's fourth down and four. The Eagles decided to go for the field goal. Skins have two timeouts left, which is rather academic right now. Franklin with the barefoot. Born in Big Springs, a Texas Aggie. A number three draft choice three years ago. He's gotten married, he's matured, he's worked hard at it. This will be a 25-yard field goal. And Franklin is five for five. The one he missed in the Dallas game was just outside the uh, 29. Must have been about a 30-yard field goal. Because he's five for five inside this distance here. But every kick is different. It's just like a golf shot. Shara, John Shara is the home. It is cold and that is real grass, not artificial. championship, the chance to fight for it anyway, and the unsurety of even getting into the playoffs hinge on a field goal that's an automatic field goal based on five for five. 
And you have a snap problem right here. And there it is. It looked like it was to the inside a little bit. But Char just dropped the football. It was not out in front of him where he could place it down easily. It was more to his right shoulder from this angle. And, of course, it proved very costly and it cost him the football game. Well, what a tough way to lose. 50 seconds on the clock. The Redskins, Redskins have somehow managed to do it. Well, the Redskins uh, came into the game wanting to beat a contender. The teams they've beaten this year are not playoff potential material. The Eagles are the first team they've beaten with that kind of potential. And there's Dick Vermeil. He's He's got to be talking to himself. These last three weeks have been nightmares. Games that they could have won, a play here, a play there, drop pass against the Giants, a couple of plays against the uh, the Dolphins, and they're in that football game. And you can't bring it down to this last crucial two minutes, though. The Eagles have just not scored the points in the first three quarters. They had some opportunities. They haven't done it. They've averaged less than 10 points a game for three weeks in a row, and that's going to come back to, to haunt you, which it did today. Washington holds on to win this. It, would have, it will be the fourth Eagle loss in the last eight weeks. Shrug of the shoulders tells you, what else can you do? The defense has given up only 15 points. The offense for the Eagles has gotten 13 points today. 10 against the Giants, 10 against Miami, and 13 against the Washington Redskins. Now he's a beleaguered uh, coach, a brilliant coach, a coach that's really brought the Eagles to the uh, top of the National Football League. Big year, expected this year after a 6-0 start, Super Bowl last year. And they have really had their problems over this last stretch, losing five out of eight. And the Redskins will win six out of their last nine games. The Eagles must play Dallas and St. Louis, and they still have not assured themselves of a wild card playoff spot, but no division title. Taking it like a man, though. I tell you, you got to admire that coach. And there's Joe Gibbs, a, a young and coming coach that's going to build a, a great Redskin franchise here. Executive producer is Terry O'Neill of NFL Football on CBS. Senior producer is Charles H. Milton III, and boy, he would love a game like this. Produced by our good friend Michael Burks. Directed by Andy Kendall and all the people that make CBS football so darn much fun. Tom